All right, we are now live. So, this is about a half hour early. I know um, a little bit earlier than usual, but that is because of a few reasons. Well, not necessarily just because my Eagles are playing tonight, but um, I do want to watch some of that, but I wanted to get started earlier. We'll kind of have a, just a, a chill session for right now, and then we'll let people kind of jump in. Um, and get going. So if you are already here, make sure to run up the uh, like button. I appreciate you guys for doing so. Um, the more likes we get, the more people we can get on here uh, who can see this, who can give their thoughts, their feedback, kind of what they think is going to happen this week. Because we are, you know, we have some very volatile times. So futures as of right now are down. We'll kind of start off with some of this stuff, the futures kind of spy overall thoughts. Futures are down right now. So for those tuning in, just wanted to start a little bit earlier. Um, we'll talk more about kind of what's going on. But um, so we finished strong, actually. If we want to go back to, let's take a look at SPY. So we'll, we'll zoom out on this chart, but I want to look at the one day, one minute um, to show kind of how we actually finished up. So we were down pretty decently on Friday, um, but then towards the end of the day, like the last half hour, we actually kind of looks like we were trying to test the lows and I thought we'd sell off into the close, but we actually didn't. We ran up pretty nice. Uh, and we kind of ran up the last few minutes and then held up pretty strong in after hours. So that was kind of interesting. I didn't expect on Friday, but futures now are down. So we've kind of given back a good chunk of that. So we'll see what actually happens, of course, when we open up tomorrow morning because a ton of things can change overnight. Anything can happen. There could be news. There could be, you know, stuff. We pretty much still have the same kind of thoughts um, in terms of like, what's kind of driving things. We have cases on the rise, right? We have um, the overall stimulus, right? That's not happening before the election. So we kind of knew that like last week, but now it's a, you know pretty much official, like it's not happening. You know, they're gonna come back potentially after the election and, and even that could get kind of ugly because we don't know what's gonna happen. Are they gonna have, you know, in this lame duck period, right? If Trump has to leave office, is he gonna be inclined to get a deal done? I don't know, you know, is it necessarily, you know, completely up to him? There's a lot of things that could be, you know, up, up for grabs. And so we may not see that until potentially as late as February. Now, um, good, and there's some certain things that may have to get passed to extend some deadlines. I know there's some stuff when it comes to eviction protections. I know there's some stuff with student loans and stuff like that, um, that currently, as of right now, are pushed to the December 31st. So we need something on those on that front, uh, unless we'd have a, a, a real mess. So. I don't know. I think we know that stimulus is coming. The market's kind of been pricing in that stimulus is coming. It's just a matter of when do we get it, I think, is, is really the key for right now. So um, we finished pretty strong. Don't mind some of these wicks. There's some you know errors based on the chart here on, uh, on Weeble. But finished strong um, at least. Now, if I want to zoom things out on SPY, here's what I'm looking at. So I have these lines drawn in here as just previous areas of support and resistance that I've seen in the past that could act as some areas that may be some strong support and resistance for right now. Um, reason why we had this high, when we pulled back, we had this kind of three levels of support right here, these wicks down. Um, we had that down, you know, down there. We came down to this 320 again here, and so that's my that's my level. As of right now, futures are not down enough to, to for us to open up below this level. But if we do open up below 320 on spy, um, I'm that's not looking good. I think we may be testing 310, 300 potentially if we do see a, a bigger sell off. So that's my thoughts. How's it going, Justin? Uh, I started things up. I know a little bit early, but we'll we'll go we'll go we'll go longer. You know we'll. We'll, we'll let things kind of let people jump in. Uh, make sure to run up the likes, guys. I really appreciate that, and it helps out get more people in here. We get some more ideas, more feedback. I got a, st a bunch of stocks I'm going to go through. I got a bunch of my thoughts um, uh, as to you know what's going to happen, but ultimately, um, I don't know what's going to happen. That's just that's just kind of the name. That's just how it how it is right now. If I could tell you what's going to happen, if I had to guess, um, we'll see some some volatility. I think tomorrow we'll see some significant volatility on Tuesday. I'd be seeing some wide swings, especially if we start getting some preliminary kind of data in, in terms of like numbers coming in from some mail-in ballots. I know I've seen some stuff already, but if we get some numbers coming in on on Tuesday, maybe we get something going there. We get some reaction um, from the market. And then the real day is going to be Wednesday, in my opinion. Either we don't have a definitive answer because they're still counting votes and ballots and mail and stuff, or we have a definitive answer and the market is going to say, hey, 
this is good or hey, this is not good for the market, right? And I don't know. <laughs> I mean, as much as everyone might think that you know the market loves Trump and that if Trump wins, we'll be going up, will we rebound right away? I don't know. And if Biden wins, does that mean everything's over? We're going spy, you know, sub three hundred. Do we really dip that far? I don't know. I think there's going to be because he, you know, there's there's going to be a lot up in the air, a lot to still be decided. So, lots. Um, take a look. Uh, Vryf. I personally haven't because, to be honest with you, um, the reason why. Oh yeah, very good food. I'm waiting post election. I haven't looked in into this one too much. I just had enough stuff that I was personally already looking at, and so I'm waiting post election to see what happens. Um, and you know. That's just my take. I, I know, I know people have been talking about it. At least I've gotten some comments and stuff. Just for me, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on something like that. Um, I I am still in some things. So on my on the left hand side, at least as my positions. Um, and you guys know from my past uh, from past videos and from the top penny stocks I'm watching for November. These are the top ones that I'm watching for sure. TBLT, I'm still in, month bunch of catalysts, DGLY, this is a riot play. I actually want to grab some more on Monday if I can. If we get a bigger dip in the overall market, um, I might grab some DGLY if we see some more riots. I think, it, honestly, I think we're going to see riots over wins. I think we're going to see riots no matter what. Um, this tends to run during that, so that's one thing that I want to be watching. Um, potential riot plays for penny stocks. And then ADMP, we have the FDA approval coming up. The PDUFA date is the 15th of November. ADTX still waiting on that emergency youth authorization. Um, so that's those are my plays. As much as like uh, it stunk to hold them last week because they pretty much were down, um, I'm still holding them and adding dips. So that's just my my thoughts on those. They could come out with PRs anytime. So that's just my plan. Of, of course, I don't know if, if, if it was the smartest move necessarily to hold them, although they're the swings that I like. So it depends. Everyone has their own strategy. Um, ideally, you'd want to be putting your money into something that has like the shortest time frame for a move, right? So you can maximize, you know, maximize the uh, the percentage returns. I still think building out a solid swing position is kind of this, my strategy for that stuff. Um, with the catalyst still f perfectly in line, those have not changed, right? Overall markets come down; they've come down with the overall market, but the you know the catalysts in mind have not changed. And so I'm hoping things start heating up post-election. And that's my thoughts on those. So I'm actually looking to buy more, personally, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll see what happens, right? Um, I've, I, If I had to say on the overall market, my thought is bearish, right? So let's look at the four-hour chart on SPY. So we came down. Now we're consolidating down here, but we're still kind of making lower lows, right? So with that, I think I'm very bearish under 320 on SPY. So that's what we got to break below. That was a couple weeks, about a month or so back. We were at 320, um, and so we dropped below 320. I'm very bearish, but I don't, I don't want to. I'm not going to be going all in bear. Like I'm not an all in bear right now because that's we're consolidating here, and we got a decent, you know, a decent support that we're trying to break break on through. So we still got to break on through that support, fall below that for me to think, uh oh. <laughs> And what I'm going to do personally for, for this, and this is just my plan. So I will be ready to day trade options. I know that's just, you know, I made a video going over um, a recent kind of strategy, but I'm going to be ready to day trade them. Only reason I say day trade them is because I don't know what's going to happen overnight, right? We may get a decent direction come Wednesday for the overall market, either a rebound or a further drop. But will that continue Thursday, Friday? I'm not going to, I don't want to be the one to sit here and say, oh yeah, I'm going all in on that. So I will not be holding options plays overnight. Um, the only option plays I'm going to be holding overnight are VXX calls, just volatility plays. I think it'll hold its value at least Monday, Tuesday. And then I'll probably sell out of my calls Tuesday and then just hold shares of VXX in case of some crazy, crazy thing that happens Wednesday morning. That's just my take on that. If VXX spikes above 30, I'll probably take some profits off the table though on the shares and definitely the calls. That's just how I'm going to play it. Um, so that's the only thing that I'm personally going to be like swing trading in terms of the option front. But if we do drop below 320 on SPY, I will probably trade either uh, UVXY, so a volatility play. Um, I'll trade like something like um, SPY puts or something like that. So that's how I'll, I'll do it, but it will be for a day trade. So we drop below 320, we may just get an absolute panic and then that's where I'll be like, okay, let me get in, let me get out. I'll take my whatever percentage gain, however, you know, I'm, whatever trend line I'm, I'm looking to follow, whatever support level I'm looking to break, and then ride it down. 
and then take my take my trade off because I'm not going to look to be holding very much here um, through the election. Now this may happen tomorrow, this may happen Tuesday, this may happen Wednesday, or it may not happen at all if we do re if we kind of hold up on this support level um, and bounce. That's just kind of my take. I know it's it's not like we have a definitive kind of move. We're coming in here. You could of course go you know um, take this take the risk and go short or go long now. Um, and, and take that risk, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're just YOLOing or you really have some experience. That's just my take. Um, yep, so uh, Riot plays. Those are some good, yeah, ammo and gun stocks. That's not, those are not bad plays. Um, entry point for Tesla. Let me take a look at Tesla. Um, I'm, I actually, I have some long-term, but that's just kind of like a longer-term play that I've got. I'm looking for Tesla to kind of fell out of this, this um, uptrend that we had, this higher lows developing. Um, so that's not good on the chart, but I would be looking for Tesla, to be honest. I'm looking for potentially to come down to this like 350-ish area. Could be a decent spot if it does come down further. If the market holds up, it may start making a move up. So I'm waiting for Tesla either to break out above this 460-ish and then make it run at all-time highs, or for it to come down to either this wick, this candle down 350, maybe 325, do I dare even say 300 potentially? There's going to be some better areas um, in terms of support for Tesla. I know it's it's kind of a big drop, but we did fall out of this uptrend that we had, or this you know. Of course, it's not perfect. Trending's just it's a, it's not an exact science it's art. So um, let it come down. We'll see what happens. That's how I'm going to play it. Um, I do think though, if we do get um, well, not really if we do, but post this dip, right? Post spy dip. If we see a further dip. Or if we don't, if this is kind of the dip that we have, this correction right now, I don't know. I think we could see a further correction. But if we don't, right, post dip, if we are coming into more of a bullish time, maybe get stimulus, something like that, right, we have hopes of that going forward, post election, the dust settles. Um, what I would be liking is is just some solid tech growth stocks is probably where I'd be situating myself at, on a longer term play for some dips. So what, what are some of those, right? I like... Um, the big names right? like Tesla, I do like you know the simple names like Apple, Amazon. Those solid names, if they come down a little bit more, that would those are some solid entries that, or at least dip buys for you to just buy something for the long term. Um, if you like those companies, um, you can look to something like even Facebook. You can look to even Walmart. I know Rocket Mortgage. A lot of people are talking about. I like Rocket Mortgage. I'm looking to buy some more Rocket Mortgage probably after the election. I want to say this week if we get a further dip, but I mean I'm just going to be safe and go after the election. Um, NIO. NIO is one that I really like. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to be able to get some dips. So I talked about this one in today's um, video that I released, but I ultimately wanted NIO to come back down to this big trend line that we had. It may not. Um, right now, if it comes back down to this trend line, that's not a bad idea, a bad entry. Um, ultimately, eventually, I think it's going to cool off. So eventually, we're going to have a period of cons a longer period of consolidation. It's just on an absolute tear right now. And does this tear bring the stock up closer to 50 bucks, 100 bucks in the near term this year? I don't know. Certainly possible based on the momentum, based off all the stuff that I'm seeing has been pretty good um, from, for NIO on the NIO, on the NEO front. So I want to get some. I'm waiting till after the election. Is that going to hurt me? Can I potentially get in lower now? Maybe if it holds up. Um, that's just my plan. Just in case we see an overall dip in the market, that's just you know how I'm going to play it, right? Um there's there's a lot of sectors that we can talk about so ultimately if we see um i, I don't know how this is going to react because people are talking about right and you can think right biden biden wins right renewable stocks so let me go to my watch list here and talk about a couple um green energy stocks i have a bunch here um so let's this is i think an etf so solar etf is tan so this is just a good one to kind of model like you know renewable plays right if biden wins so We've already seen what looks to be a decent pricing in of a potential Biden win, right, for TAN. So if we see a Biden win and people are like, oh, yeah, you know, like, you know, green energy stocks, renewable energy stocks, like that'll be what runs. That's true. But if the market comes down hard because of that, right, if, if let's say that's what happens, right, do these stocks hold up? Maybe you want to look to individual stocks that are running up. And maybe not the entire sector as a whole will be doing well. So it's going to be kind of tough. But that said, as the dust settles, um, if Biden wins, generally what we're looking at renewable stocks on the up, oil stocks on the down. Trump wins, that could be a little bit better for oil stocks. So we may be seeing like an oil stock that I've been watching um, that I actually was in a long time ago. I bought, well, not a long time ago, but towards like a few months back, 
um, after this dip we saw for uh, ExxonMobil. So I think has a dividend too. Um, but I bought it here, it went up, and then it's been coming on down. So if we get a Trump win, this could be a stock that benefits from that or gets at least a little bit of a push up or we see a bigger reversal to the upside um, if Trump does win. Um, other than that, though, um, if Trump wins, that'll be generally good for like bank stocks, just probably good for like your, like I was saying before, your tech growth stocks. Those stocks will probably benefit from a Trump win. Now, does it happen right away, right? Does it happen right away? That's the ultimate question. I don't know how the market's going to react. Um, is this an ugly kind of, do we see a close enough win where it's like, it gets kind of ugly one way or the other? I don't know. That could be that could be one of those things that, that throws a curveball in because what if we don't have a definitive answer or let's say Trump's leading, right, come Tuesday night or, or come Wednesday morning, but technically all the ballots aren't counted yet and they're saying, hey, it's not over yet. I don't know how the market's going to take that. I think the market will not be very happy um, if we see more uncertainty in terms of we don't have a definitive winner right away. Like I would say Tuesday night, if you're up late, you may have a decent idea, but if we don't have something by Wednesday morning, you know, that's going to throw the Wednesday for a whole loop, I'll tell you that. So, um, yeah, I've been in Rocket 2, not very big, but I'm waiting to buy more, and this is going to be my opportunity, I think, and it's come down. IPOB, I like that as well. Let's take a look at the chart. I haven't looked at the chart, I don't believe, for this guy in a little bit. Um, I like it. Only thing is that I'm thinking that we, you know, we'll see what happens here, but let's see if it comes down and holds this 50 SMA. $16 area. We'll see. I think long term, this is actually a decent play. But let me just draw this little trend line in here so we can kind of get a sense. Um, that's actually a solid trend line on the daily chart. So we have to break back above that for the reversal or for a reversal to the upside. So that's something that I'd be watching for IPOB. So um, let it settle down a little bit more. And then once we start to see a confirmation of reversal, potentially after the election, um, that's when I'd be looking at it personally. I do like it though. I do. Um, that, I like Rocket Mortgage a decent amount. Um, China stocks, I don't know, I, I don't know. China stocks, uh, certainly people were talking about that. Um, Biden, potential Biden win, China stocks could do well. Those ran up, a lot of China stocks have run up decently recently, so I'm not a huge fan of China stocks right now. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm planning on this is going to be a very active week. I'll tell you that. So um, I'm going to be pretty much sticking, you know, to watching stuff and seeing what I'm, you know, if, if I see stuff. I'm going to probably go live a couple times, to be honest. I may, I may go live um, Tuesday afternoon if we start getting some kind of reaction in the markets. And then for sure, if we get some crazy stuff, I figure out instead of making a video, like I'll just go live. Um, I'll make some videos as well, but I would probably just do that. So Make sure you are subscribed and run up the likes here in this video. I know I usually do this at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern, so we're still a little bit early. So those who um, may be jumping in just now, um, that's what's been going on. I got my Eagles playing tonight, so we'll be watching that a little bit later. That's why I wanted to kind of jump on and start things up just a little bit because although the Eagles have a terrible record, they're currently in first place in the NFC East. So there's that <laughs> for all those uh, NFL fans out there. LCA, LCA, let's take a look at LCA. Um, but look at this. So we've been seeing somewhat of a reversal. So LCA actually came down. It's actually funny. Where do we look to? You know, we're, we, we're looking for areas of, you know, support resistance, right? So we had a downtrend forming on LCA here. We kind of have this line. And we had this $11. We had some consolidation around $11.50. $11 wick down to just about the low 11s. So that was my area where I was saying it's got to hold that support. And as of right now, we wick down to like 11.39 or so, but we held up around this 11.50 and we're trying to make a reversal back to the upside. So that's solid. I think this is actually a really good buy zone for LCA personally. I'm very bullish on, on the uh, Golden Nugget Online Gaming. I'm actually very bullish on them, especially based on where they were. I think they can get back up to these levels at some point for sure. And so to be honest, for a longer term play, I think this is a, a solid entry point because we've broken out of this kind of downtrend. Now, for me, again, like I, I don't want to keep you know beating the dead horse here, but I'm going to wait till the after the election to, to buy some longs. And and personally, as much as like as much as you kind of it, it sounds like dumb, and, and I, people have said like I've even said it in like other videos, and people are like, so you want this you want a stock to go down, but you're bullish, and they're like, idiot. The idea here is that I I want more dips because I like the stock. I like the stock fundamentally, like the industry. I like the stock long term. 
So I want more dips, yes. I want to get a lower average so that I can make more money later. I don't care if this stock moves in another six months or in a year. I want to get my average as low as possible. So LCA is one of those. FSR now, Fisker previously SPAC is one of those. I don't know if we're going to get further dips under 10, but I want more dips under 10 because I want to lower my average. So on stocks like that, that you really, you like long term, you know, it's if you get to that point where you really want a further dip and you're fine with seeing your account come down temporarily because you can load up, like that's when you kind of made a, I guess, like a shift in terms of like, I guess you're trading or you're investing, right? You, you're really taking a shift and hopefully you've kind of started to move that or remove that mental kind of emotional aspect from it, which is, that's the key. That's what I've found. And I was, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've still been, I've been bad. I've been bad. This past week, I got a couple, a couple positions hurt me where I just exited just a bit too early. Um, and it, it ran right after the day after, and I could have gotten a better en- exit. I could have made more money. I could have minimized a loss. And I didn't because I kind of got I was a little bit emotional or I was just not thinking rationally at the time. So a tough trading, a tough market can do that to you for sure. Um, let's take a look at PayPal. Uh, earnings tomorrow. Yeah, so uh, earnings, that's the thing. You know, with earnings tomorrow, that's a risk there. If you're in it already, that's one thing. But I'm personally, I wouldn't be um, looking to play into earnings. That's just a risk. Unless you're holding long term, that's one thing. But yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So we kind of have this top line resistance right here. Um, actually, let me just draw in um, a horizontal line. It's probably better. So let me draw in this horizontal line. Rough. You know, we have two points. Not perfect, but the wicks and, and whatnot. Okay, that does the job. And let me draw like a trend line. So we kind of, you can probably do something like from here. It's kind of just like a rough, a rough little, you know, thought, a, r- a little rough estimation. But that's kind of a trend line. We have one point, about two points there, I'd call. And then just about the point right there. So if we hold up here, this is actually a solid uptrending support, top line resistance. A breakout here over this 215 would be awesome for PayPal. So that's what I'd be looking for. Um, we've been seeing a lot of stocks so that have run up significantly over the past you know year or so that just get crushed, even with decent earnings, right? Even with good earnings, they've just been getting crushed. And so people are looking to kind of, it's more of a buy the rumor, sell the news. Um, and so I wouldn't be surprised to see further dips. If we do, you know, entries 175, entries at 165 could be some good areas, potentially even 150. I don't know if it will come down that far, but those could be some decent entries. If we do get dips like that, then that could be an awesome, you know, grab some for the long haul. Um, they just had some Bitcoin news, I believe, which I believe is awesome for PayPal. Um, that's going to set them up hopefully a little bit better for the future. I believe that's, um, if you're someone who's like into Bitcoin, I'm not, I'm not a big, I'm not like a, I don't know as much as like some people about Bitcoin to be honest, but I believe in a buy and hold on Bitcoin. So if you have Bitcoin, I think it's, it's not a bad, it just to put like 5%, 2% of your portfolio, a longer term portfolio into Bitcoin, just so you have that there. Um, you know, I, I think that's a solid investment or at least somewhat of a hedge in a sense, so, but that's my thought. So this is actually looks pretty good. So we come down a little more, boom, it could be a nice bounce spot. Um, so that's my thoughts. Um, let's take a look. So OTLK, yeah, we'll look at OTLK here. Let's take a look at that. Um, this is one that I was in a while. I used to, I played this one a while ago. Um, let's take a look at this, draw this trend line here. This looks pretty good. Solid uptrending support. That just looks like a, that's beautiful. When you can come in and draw a trend line that easily, that quick, without having to, you know, look and, and like, oh, let me just line this up better. Like we have one point, two, three, four, five, six points on the line that we've hit. This is a strong trend and we're breaking out over that 50 SMA, this blue line, which acted as resistance in the past. And now we're trying to break out, hold above this line, which looks pretty good. So we hold above 75. That looks pretty good with the support line. The low end of the support line being the low 70s, like 71, 72. We drop below 70 cents, then that means we're cracking this uptrend, and that's probably not a good sign. But if we don't crack that, this is actually a solid entry in terms of a risk reward because we break above this 93 and eventually over one dollar, we're in a nice little gap, and that's at least a 20 percent, you know, a 20 percent move that we have based on this gap. So I like that. I actually like it a lot. Um, Meds WWR. Let's take a look at those. Meds. I know uh, I've been actually watching Meds. Meds fell off here a bit, but four bucks seems to be a solid support level because it came down here before and we're back. Not the best looking chart, but it is. It is with this area right here of prior support and consolidation. 
Um, that's where I would look for meds to hold up. Meds drops below four, to be honest. I don't know. I would probably wait for it to kind of calm down, consolidate, and to find some support somewhere else because it could come down further. Um, but that's my thoughts, at least on meds. WWR has run up a lot. What it's trying to do right now is it's holding up around this 375, which is actually pretty good. So it's holding up around the 375 and also this blue line, that 50 SMA, simple moving average support right there, um, that's, it's showing support. So that 375 is solid. If it falls below 375, 365, probably for me, I would cut it, let it come back down, let it consolidate further. But right now, what it's doing after its massive run, it's coming down and it potentially maybe due for a nice little bounce um, of a decent amount. And we'll see how, how far that bounce goes but it, it's setting up. It looks like it's setting up for sure. So that's the thing. When, you, when, you, when you're looking at a stock that's spiked, especially like a penny stock, right? If you Because I, I like to play them a lot, but if you're someone who likes to play penny stocks, and everyone's going to have you know their own kind of preference, right? But if you like that stuff, if you do, then playing it right after the spike, like two days later, like you don't, there's no chart history of support yet. Like, well, let it, let it calm down. This is what I'm talking about. So we have these wild moves up and down, up and down, up and down. And then we start seeing a bunch of that wild move kind of fade. We, we see these smaller moves on a day-to-day -day time scale. And that's when it's starting to set up and hold up a support level. That's what I like, okay? Um, yeah, Bitcoin is really kind of teasing that 14,000. 14, um, actually, let's, let's take a look at Bitcoin right now. So it's, it's right up there. It's it's like, look at this uptrend we have on Bitcoin on the daily chart. It's like it wants to just rip over 14K. Um, and if it does, if I look back at the weekly chart. Um, that's why I want to zoom this out over the past couple of years. Reason why is because we have this around this level that we're at right now, over 14K, over 14.5. This thing can make a run at all time highs. So this chart looks like it's beautifully bullish setting up. Um, although I will say that to be honest, it seems as if we, we're seeing a little bit less of a correlation now, but Bitcoin had always, had not always, but it's, it kind of at times seems to follow the market. So what I've noticed is that big pullback days in the market, we also see a little bit of a pullback in Bitcoin. And so a lot of Bitcoin related stocks that I've been watching have pulled back a decent amount as well. So um, they could be prime, they could be prime for a bigger move like Mara Riot. Those could, those could be prime, I think, for a bigger move at some point. Um, if we can get a bigger breakout over 14,000 and hold up above that and start making a further move, that would be solid for Bitcoin. Um, DraftKings, I do like it. Let's take a look. DK and G. Let's look at the daily chart. So it's it's coming down oversold. So it's hitting oversold levels here on the RSI. Now, not that I would necessarily make a trade just solely based on the RSI. But every time it's come down to an oversold point on the RSI or gotten close, it's bounced pretty decently. And people are trying to find a bounce area. I thought it would potentially hold up this trend line and bounce. It's not. So that was the last time I looked at it. But we have some decent consolidation right in here. So this $35 level seems like it could be based off this consolidation. If we go below that, potentially 31 or even 30 bucks could be another area that I'd be looking at for a bounce on DraftKings. If we fall below 35 could be one of those casualties based on the overall market, though. So within the overall market, we may just see DraftKings fall as well. So let me take a look. Uh, futures. Futures are pretty much... Actually, let's see. They're looking like they're coming up with just a touch from what they were um, down at least before. So um, that's not terrible. Um, but let's see. Yeah, they're, they're trying to rebound a little bit, but they're still, they're still down. So um, we see the VIX is up nearly 2%. That was up like 3% just about like an hour ago. Uh, but it looks like everything's going to be red as of right now. Things could change for sure. But that's at least what we're seeing. Um, LAC better than DKNG. This is coming down. Trying to find some support. Looks like around this $10 level, which is not a terrible spot. Um, so it's trying to bounce around this 9 to 10. It's pretty volatile, though. Um, seems like. So I don't know. We'll see. This, this looks like it could be a, a decent spot right here. If not, maybe down towards like $7.50 or 7 bucks. Could be an area that we may be holding up. So um, there is that. But we also have a downtrend. So we can draw this in based off the daily chart, pretty much something like that. We break out above that to the upside. That's a nice reversal. Um, we can even probably, let's take a look at DKNG um, and see what we what we see. We can probably draw something similar. It's not perfect. You can probably draw it from different time frames and stuff, but it's something like that. So 
there's your downtrend on DK and G. Break back to the upside reversal could be a decent move or could be a nice play for a call. A call. Yes, uh, Miles, we did because I, I, I'm I going to hang out longer. Don't worry. But um, I figured I start a little early. And uh, I got my Eagles later, so I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna leave everyone hanging. I'm gonna stay on for a bit, but I want to give a little bit of early start just so that um, I don't know we can get things kind of going. We're pretty chill, nothing crazy going on. Futures are down just a bit. We'll see. If you guys would not mind running up the likes, I appreciate you guys. Let's try to beat. I want to beat last time's um, last time's viewers. We had at one point we got to run it up, but. I know the viewers kind of towards the end as, as we kind of get more likes and as we kind of get more people watching. So I appreciate you guys for doing so. Um, but let's see. What else am I looking at personally? So what I wanted to look at really quick actually was I wanted to sh talk about VXX. This is just my this is my trade that I've been running. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised here on VXX. This is a volatility play. I'm surprised that it hasn't pushed up further. I was thinking that we'd get it closer, we'd be closer to 30 by now. That's just my thoughts. Based on this prior move that we saw here, um, we were down at like 24 bucks and we pushed on up to like 34-ish, just about 34. Um, and that was when we had the sell-off a few months ago in September. Um, that's what we were looking at, yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, per personally, I'm saying no. It's not really safe to go into much other than volatility plays. So that's why I'm, I mean, I am in a couple of my swings. So you're just accumulating them, and that's my just my strategy. Can it hurt me a little bit? Yes, temporarily, but I still think that I'm solid on them. I have a solid plan in mind. But other than that, I have VXX calls and I have VXX. So just, I only have two calls, nothing crazy. Just in case we get a crazy move, I'll be taking my, I'll be scaling out Monday, Tuesday, and then maybe holding just shares. Um, overnight through the election in case we get some wild move where we get more uncertainty in the election. But that's just my plan. Um, I don't know. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. So um, let's see. Um, I, would, yeah, I was saying this is, this is – I would think it would be higher. But we'll see what happens tomorrow. If we get a further sell-off in the market, this could be what – you know, this could run up a little bit further. I'm thinking I want to see it get close to 30 bucks, and then I'll be taking my calls off the table if we get there. Um, either way, I'll probably be taking – at least one call off the table come Tuesday night or come Tuesday afternoon. We'll see what happens, but that's my plan. Um, Caleb, awesome. Appreciate it. You know, um, awesome. Let's see. Let's see. Is LIC worth it? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked as much into uh, LIC. Um, personally, I haven't. So I don't know. Um, I'm I'm just basically looking off the chart here from what I all I can all I can tell right now. That's that's my best my best thoughts for you. So it was up to 17. It's pulled back, decent pullback. Um, let's break out of this uptrend or break out of this downtrend for a reversal to the upside. That's what I'd be looking at for LAC. Um, but those who were talk who are worried about LCA or I was talking about this before, it's starting to kind of consolidate right off this at this prior support. It's it's making it a little bit of a reversal. So that's a good sign. For those who are still in LCA or holding it, I'm not in right now waiting for post-election um, to start buying up some LCA. Um, FSR, I know I talked about that one last week, but look what we had on Friday. Well, we had the official ticker, um, the ticker change on Friday. I want it to come back under 10. It closed after hours, actually up a little bit higher than where it closed in the day. I'm saying I want to buy, I want to buy more under 10. Either way, post-election, I'm going to buy more in a long-term um, play. But that's just me. We'll see if we can get further dips. But what I've been also noticing too, if we go to back back to um, some EV plays, some Lordstown Motors, so Ride, they had, I forget what day they had the ticker change, but they had the ticker change and they were pretty volatile. They had a pretty big spike up, but they actually have sold off since. So I wouldn't be surprised to see FSR, even though we just had this spike up for that ticker change, I wouldn't be surprised to see it come back on down just a little bit. Under 10, make some new lows. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I do think that there's a lot going on. I think there's a lot going on there. There's going to be a lot of a lot of news coming out in the near future for FSR, but we still have time until production. So um, that's that. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Amazon. This is one that I'm liking post. Uh, I keep saying post election, but just really post volatility. Um, under three thousand on Amazon would be an awesome for a longer term to help build out a longer term position. Um, it's been a monster, but if we do get People are talking, okay, we get a Trump win, we get a Biden win. 
if we get a Trump win, we probably see a lot of these stocks as the market tends to or has seemingly liked Trump um, uh, lately, right? So not lately, just in general uh, over the past couple of years, right? So if we get this, this wouldn't be a terrible dip buy or a terrible play for the long term for a potential breakout back up over this 3,500 area. Um, that's how I would see it. Now, if, if you guys don't, uh, for those who are potentially new, if you don't have a broker that you can buy fractional shares or you don't have, let's say you're starting out with capital that's, or you're not comfortable buying one share, try to find a broker that allows you to buy fractional shares. There's a bunch of brokers these days that allow it. Um, now, I don't necessarily recommend like Robinhood as like your training brokerage, I tell you. but as a longer term portfolio, I know there's also the hacking stuff, so make sure you have all your safety, safety measures, your two-factor authentication, all that stuff in check. As a longer term portfolio, I actually don't mind it. I have stuff there in a longer term swing. So if I want to put my money in something for the long term swing or for just a longer term investment temporarily, I'll throw it into Robinhood. And then if I ever need to liquidate it and take the cash out, I just kind of have access to it. So it's not my IRA. I use M1 Finance for my IRA. All, all links are always going to be in the description for any of those brokerage as well. Uh, and then Webull is more of my like fun, active kind of trading platform that I use. So um, this is coming down pretty good. So maybe it comes down to this under under 3,000 to be a solid entry. I think that even, even if you get scared, I wouldn't be buying calls. I mean, personally, unless you're a little more experienced, I wouldn't be buying calls. Um, but because we might see some more volatility, but let it come down. If we see a further sell-off and you buy under under 3,000 and it keeps dipping, um, long-term, I think you're going to be just fine. Uh, under 3,000 is going to be solid. Long-term, you're going to look back and say, yeah, you know, why did I really care? And in those like couple of weeks that we were down on my position, it wasn't a big deal. Long-term, you should be fine. Just don't buy it all at once. Just buy in, in chunks. Um, whether it keeps dipping, keep buying, or whether it starts making that move to the upside, keep buying. That's my thoughts. But if it comes out and starts breaking out, what we're looking for, like a potential breakout, um, it looks like if we break out of this kind of prior kind of uptrend or prior highs here, it looks like if we get over over 3,500 would be solid for a breakout um, on Amazon. So it's trying to hold up some potential support. It's going to find some support potentially around that 3,000 and potentially just underneath. So 2,900 might be uh, might be the next area, in my opinion. Canadian penny stocks to look at. Um, Peak positioning is OTC, fintech company, work with China. 10-bagger, PKKFF. Let's take a look. Peak positioning. So I can't, um, well, that doesn't matter. I can't necessarily trade it on here, but that's fine. Um, I have for OTC stocks, which I don't generally play, but I'll, I'll look into this one. I'll get a little bit further, but um, I'll use TD Ameritrade, or you can use, I know there's a, lot, a bunch of other brokers that you can use that have that allow you to trade OTC. Um, Robinhood and Webull do not. I know Webull does not. I'm pretty sure Robinhood doesn't either. Um, so if you're like, where I can't trade that, you know, that's probably why. A TD Ameritrade um, will be fine for that would be my next recommendation personally if, you, if you're looking for a broker that can trade OTC stocks. So this is down pretty low. And this is looking like it's starting to make a, a pretty nice move up. But I, I hear what you're saying in terms of uh, potential of the potential here. I'll, I'll take a look further into that. And those who are interested, you know, write this down and, and take some and take some notes and look back into this, you know, on your own and see what you like. And if you do like it, this is, you know, OTC is actually, I don't know, in haven't been following like a, a ton, but I think it's been doing better than um, I get, think lately because we've been seeing kind of the overall market is just pennies. Penny stocks have been kind of crappy. Overall market's been kind of choppy up and down crappy lately. So I think OTC has been doing decent, or at least if you can find kind of the diamonds in there, you can find some of the, some of the, those kind of plays. They, I think they've been doing okay. Um, stocks that'll rebound hard. If we see a further dip, personally, it's going to be the big tech. So um, your Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Tesla. Um, I like Walmart. I like Rocket Mortgage. I like NIO, personally. Um, those, I think, are all solid. And there's t so many other ones you can see there as well. But even like the banks, so like JP Morgan, if, if Trump wins, um, this is a solid play. I think that could rebound pretty nice. It's, it's after its big sell-off um, back in March, right? We've been This is actually looking at the weekly chart. I'll look at the daily chart to get a better sense. Um, after the March sell-off a while back, um, if we zoom in here, we kind of see this uptrend developing. It's it's right here at this uptrend. So, you know, this could be a massive move for a nice longer-term position. Or even if you want to buy longer-term calls, a little bit less, it's going to cost you some money. But this could be a decent play as well um, for a move back up over 100 and potentially back to like 125 plus is what I would be thinking for like JP Morgan. There's even uh, Bank of America, a bunch of other banks, even Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo has not been performing as well, though, I don't believe. Um, so banks I like, 
um, for that. Um, if we hit a Trump win, I wouldn't be surprised to see, like I even mentioned a little bit earlier, ExxonMobil oil stock um, I'm making further moves. Biden wins. This is probably not going to be where you want to have your money. Um, that's my personal thought. Biden's big on the green energy. So um, if we go back here to some of the green energy plays, um, CAN is uh, an ETF. So it's been running up a lot. And I think this absolute breakout above 59 or so was fueled or really fueled based on kind of pricing in or beginning to price in a Biden win. And it's been selling off just a bit. I think we'll see a further move up if he does win. Um, but that's kind of the thought there. I'm going to have, I'll talk more about some of these um, in, a, in a future video if he does win. And so we'll really dive into some of these. But ENPH is one that I do like. But a lot of these have had, like I said, they made that pretty big move up recently. So is it worth getting in before? Maybe you, you make a little bit more money if, if he does win and you kind of, you know, try to get in early. But if he doesn't win and things sell off or, you know, whatever, is it worth it? I, personally, I'll be waiting till after the election. NEE is another one um, that I like as well. Coming back to that 50 SMA here pretty soon. So we'll talk more about some of these that I like um, as we get closer. SBE is one that um, is sitting at that 50 SMA as well. So it's potentially holding up some support in here. Um, it's another SPAC play as well. People who like the SPAC plays, there you go. There's your, there's your SPAC play of the day, SBE potentially. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do you think we'll hold up in FSR? I think so. I think we're going to be just fine. I think if it dips a little bit further, might get a dip under 10. But I, I think FSR will be fine. Um, if we do get a crazy sell-off and it dips further, I think that that's just going to be a, a big overreaction. So I'm going to be buying more. But I'm, I'm ready to buy some over 10. I'm ready to buy some below 10. So that's just kind of how I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy that in chunks. not just going to buy a ton at once. I'll just slowly buy some over the next couple months. I still think that we got many months on that play that you can still be getting in for a relatively low price. So I think FSR is going to be just fine. Let's take a look at FCEL. Fuel cell energy. Um, I used to, I put this one a lot. Um, in the past, and let's take a look. So it's coming down. It's two bucks or so. It seems like it dropped just below two on Friday. I don't know. The, I I liked it at that two dollar support. Personally, I have not gone over eighty two x. I'll talk about that one in a little bit. Um, I've liked it at the two dollar support, but um, if we do get a further dip, let's let's see what happens. I I don't know. This dip kind of freaked me out. <laughs> I, mean, I I was in, and then I sold out on this dip under like. I think somewhere in the 190s, and then it recovered like two days later and recovered from like 158 to 275. Like that was nuts. So it's kind of a it's kind of weird. Um, FCEL, personally, I'm not a. I'm probably not gonna play it right now, just because I just I, I played it a lot in the past and done well, but this just weirded me out right here. So it kind of threw me off. So we'll see. But that's your kind of downtrend. We break out of that area. That could be a solid move to the upside. So. If we can break back up above 225, 230, that could be a solid move. Um, um, HYLN, I like it. I do. But again, I'm going to wait till the post-election. Do I miss out potentially on a little bit of activity if, if it does move up beforehand? Maybe. But I'm going to wait till post-election. It came down to this area. That we, you know, <laughs> It's funny. We had that Jim Cramer kind of hit piece. Not hit piece, but... He was saying he doesn't like it at the current levels. Let it come down to like 20 or under 20. And of course, here we are. We're under 20. Um, so there you go. Um, but there it is. So this is coming down under under 19. It's kind of fallen to this consolidation area. If we see a further dip, maybe 15. Maybe we look at 15. But I'm going to start buying more. I bought some up here. Fine. No big deal. But I'm going to start buying more. Um, HYLN I like I like just all the ED plays personally um, it, either either side wins I don't really care what's uh, it, it, which side may have you may argue that Biden with renewables EVs will be really hot with him I think with Trump EVs have been hot anyway so I think we, either way I think you're going to have EVs staying hot that's the sector of the future I think um, we are just scratching the surface so it's actually fine I'm, I'm glad that we had this kind of hype period for a lot of the EVs even SPACs in general Pull back, buy the pullback. I think it's a solid play. Buy the pullback on these solid on these solid companies. Of course, follow the news because um, 
there's always that risk of, of you know what happens are they going to be you know managing their cash properly are, they, are, they, are things going well you know are they going to have issues but if, if if you manage your risk and you you know you should be fine i think longer term on these that's my thoughts uh, i'm waiting till after the election again on this one just like a bunch of things i'm going to have a decent amount of cash ready on hand so that's my plan ideally for me now this is just my my situation but ideally for me what would happen here is that we get a massive sell-off tomorrow tuesday and then XX position, I take some profit off of my volatility options, I take profit on my VXX position, and then we get a rebound into the rest of the week, and then come Wednesday, I'm ready to buy and buy and buy and buy, and, and then we rebound through the rest of the week and potentially next week. That's what I hope is gonna happen. Is it gonna happen? Who knows? Um, I don't know. I, I, I wish it would be that easy, but I don't. I, that's my anticipation for right now. But again, every time I feel strongly one way or the other, I've come and I've learned that I've, the market's humbled me every time. So I'm not going to be going all in because if I was going, what would you do, right? Just go all in on spy puts. Just buy spy puts. You'd be fine. No, I would not do that because, of course, it may sound cool right now, but, it, you know, who knows what can happen tomorrow? Who knows what could happen the next day? So that's my thought. <clears throat> Loop Insights, R-A-C-M-F. Let's take a look at that. It's starting to make a little bit of a move on up. Uptrending as of late, it looks like. So here's this play. Let's to kind of draw. You can probably you can probably even draw something in from back here. Looks like there's your kind of uptrend. So it's uptrending. It's your OTC play, right? Um, let's see. Partner on Amazon Web Services, COVID automated contact tracing using Vegas, professional sports. There that's that's another that, I like that. I like that play. Um, these are some decent OTC plays. Um, that if you can trade OTC or you're looking for something like that, that's kind of like, and the way that I would trade OTC is go super small, but you know, look for that 100%, 200%, you know, plus type of move. Um, that's my thoughts. Just received DTC, DTC approval. Okay, well, that's interesting. So it's starting to get some volume, at least, you know, it looks like it's starting to uptrend. So I like that. It could be a decent idea um, if you're looking for an OTC type play. Um, let's take a look. So I'm going to look at now, let's see, um, VBIV, MLND, then we'll go over ADTX. Um, SBE, SBE, yes, I do think that's, a, I do like that post-election as well. Um, but let's, let's, let's get the dust settling uh, and then we'll see what happens. VBIV, a vaccine. So it's trying to consolidate or trying to do something here. That's 230, 225, maybe um, your area of support. It looks like it could be, it's coming down pretty decently since where it was um, a few months back. So a larger scale picture here, you kind of have this downtrend, which we got close to breaking out of. So that's interesting. So if we break out of this downtrend, which if we look at it, one point, two points, kind of three-ish right here. So we're getting close. If we were trying to make a reversal or make a move back on up, let's see, let's see if we can get some volume coming in. Um, if we can get something like that, you know, we get some more buying volume, makes a nice reversal, that could be a solid play. Um, let's see, MLND. MLND. Oh, I think we looked at this one before and it was holding up around this like 150 and it's fallen just below, but it's wicking below. So I don't know. For me, that doesn't look great, but now it looks like a 125 could be your level of support. So let's draw another horizontal line in there. Um, and this could be your next level. The market's been weak, so I, I, I feel you. I feel it. The market's just been weak. So that could be, you know, kind of a reason why we're seeing it fall down below. But if it kind of can hold up around that 125, that could be a decent spot, I think, for some entries for an oversold play for a bounce. That's solid. Um, VXRT, that's an interesting one. Um, let's take, I, I've played it a couple times. Not, I will say, I haven't had great, great success playing it, but uh, 200 SMA holding up right for now. Seems to be at this prior level of 475 or five bucks. Seems to be like an area that it consolidated and had support in the past. So this could be a decent play for a reversal. I wouldn't want to see it go below like 450. Um, if it does go below like 450, then let's wait for it to come down and, and maybe consolidate further. Um, that's my thoughts. So let me go over, go over ADTX really quick. For those who have been, you know, in or you know freaking out market came down last week so we saw that sell-off and i'm not you know super surprised that we got that sell-off last week that's just what kind of what happened um personally for me um this is going to be the COVID anybody um emergency youth authorization anybody test emergency youth authorization here still waiting for that news and that's what i like it for so they have some anticipations into 
quarter one of 2021, being able to sell this and being able to get it out for more broader use. Um, so it, it's it's got potential here, but we got to get that PR. We got to get that press release. We got to get that news. People started to find it a couple weeks back. How these pops up. I took some profit, but then I'm looking to actually rebuy some more if we see a further dip. But instead of buying it last week, I'm going to wait till this week um, to buy some more. If we see some crazy dips, I'm not. I mean, I want to be surprised for a bunch of stuff that I, I've talked about. I like, you know, ADTX, ADMP. If we see some further dips, I wouldn't be surprised. But I'm going to be ready to buy those dips. That's just kind of my strategy based off of what I kind of the due diligence that I've done on these, on these plays. So that's my that's my thoughts. Um, let's see, TTCF, a reversal. Let's see, let's, just, let's see. So it came down, it fell down perfectly, or not perfectly, but it came down to this prior area that it fell to right here, the 16 bucks or so. Bounced pretty hard. And now, like I was saying, I think last week, I was like, let, let's let it calm down. Let's let's like, let's like see some smaller body candles. In the past three days, we've seen some candles, so it's potentially going to come back down and retest the 17, 16 level. If it can't hold that, then that's way a little bit more. Maybe it comes down and consolidates here under 15. That could be a better spot. So let's see if it consolidates here around this level. But it's looking like it's still looking kind of weak. So can it hold up around this support? If it can, great. And that's a decent entry or a spot to buy some more. If not, maybe it comes down a little bit further. But I do like this one for the long for the long haul, personally. Um, ADTX may have a wait. QLG has been waiting for FDA for months. Yeah, it may have a wait. Personally, I'm fine with waiting, and that's the thing. How I that's how I play my swings. Um, I'm ready to be going heavier. When I say heavier, it's still within my position sizing and risk management. But I'm willing to go heavier on my swings and wait. Whereas some people just want to buy something and, and see it go up this week, and that's that's everyone's kind of actually, um, that's that. Um, QLGN 371, 52 week low. Let's take a look at that really quick. Yep, so there's your kind of support level that I have drawn in. I, I've actually done well on QLGN under four. So I, I think it's a, a decent play. Um, let's see. SPCE. So it's coming down closer to this trend line. Let's see. Uh, I want to see it come down to like potentially closer to 15, 16 would be a decent spot for, for me to see SPCE. Um, I know we were talking about it last week and it's actually sold off a decent amount since last week, I believe, or it's been pulling back, but it tried to break out above this 21 ish and it's been pulling back down to this fifth. It's I'm thinking it's going to potentially pull back down to this trend line, or at least that's what I'd be looking to potentially pick some up if I wanted to grab some, if I do it, maybe I may grab some speculative in a longer term investment, not necessarily a, a quicker, but it could be a decent play. Um, I do like it. I played it back here. I think I've, I played it back in here and then I, it fell down to seven and then it popped on up. So there's that. Um, Riot. Yeah, Riot was fun. Well, not fun at the end of last week, but Riot was an interesting one. Um, let's see. So it's funny how these stocks, right? It's kind of, it's kind of, I have this little line here, but these are some Bitcoin plays. So we've been seeing Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's pushing up, right? Bitcoin's been strong, although it's kind of, if we look at the one-hour chart, it's it's pulled back. Well, not really pulled back, but like it had these pullbacks, right, off of these moves up, pullbacks. And so it seems like Riot, M-A-R-A, Mara, right, they've actually pulled back a decent amount because Bitcoin isn't making new highs continuously. So if it was like continuously like day after day, like hour after hour pushing up, these are, have been strong. But since then, it's just, I don't know, they haven't been, um, they have not been as as strong lately but i think we get back over 14 and 14.5 then these will probably heat up again so they could be some decent dip buys personally though the way that things have been going lately bitcoin has been these are better better day traded than swing traded that's just how i've been seeing it lately for a couple percent and especially if you get a breakout for the breakout tomorrow morning let's say on bitcoin uh, back above 14.1 was the high that we saw here a couple days ago or like last week um then that could be a solid play as people get more eyes on it as it gets and holds over 14. That's the thoughts. Um, let's see. Many people seeing good things with blue. Yeah, I, there was some insider buying. Do Yes, let's take a look at blue. I've been watching this one. I am not in as of right now, but it could be a play that I look to uh, post selection. So let's see. Yeah, I think a couple days ago or 
after hours, let's let's say I think like not last week, the week before that, after hours here, yeah, here it was. It pushed up to like two seventy eight or two eighty ish. Um, that was I think the insider buying. Um, let's see, boom, boom, boom. So it came down to two twenty five or so. Let's see, yeah, that's not bad. So it's not a terrible spot. Um, it came down to one one ninety five back in here, which is saying it's it it scared a lot of people who were in that. But it's really got to get. It's got to get a nice. It's, it needs a nice PR. That's what it needs. It needs a nice PR to send it, send it into this gap, and then we'll ride on up. I'll probably be looking at this one as well for an oversold bounce play for sure. Um, I'll be looking a little bit further into some, a uh, little bit more due diligence into that. I think after the election, but it's, it's on my list. I'm not. It's on my watch list. I just haven't been in personally. So, um, let's see. Let's see. CSIQ. Let's, I think I have CSIQ over here. Let's see. Yep, here it is. On my green energy list. So it, it fell below this level that was holding up pretty well um, in the past. Uh, it fell below this last week. Market week, fine. Makes some sense. Prior highs right here. Seems like this could be an area. This 35 level could be a decent area of support. And it bounced off that lately. So this is one of those, again, um, Biden wins, a Biden win. This would be probably pretty good for uh, CSIQ. Um, so that's what I'd be watching for sure. But I'm not, I would not be putting myself in these positions like Tuesday. Wait till Wednesday. You may miss some of the overnight move or you may miss some pre-market if you're not up early enough, right? But personally, I just think it's not worth the risk, right? And, and, and maybe even if, if, okay, maybe even some of these, right? If Trump wins and the market goes up or the market holds up or it doesn't sell off super a, a ton, these may hold up. But these have generally been, it seems like, potentially pricing in a, buy, a Biden win over the past couple weeks. So that's my only concern. Um, let's see. Um, where was this? FSLR was here for solar. This has been up pretty strong. It, it's got, a, I think, 100 bucks is, is a nice breakout potential for this one next. So let's see what happens. Some volatility right now. It's It's been pretty volatile lately. It seems like, but it looks like it's trying to build some higher lows in here in the 80s, so low 80s now. It's looking like it wants to put in higher lows, so if we can put another higher low in um, and make the move back on up, 100 bucks could be the next level of, of resistance that we got to break through. Should I buy, and oh yeah, NEE really quick. Same kind of boat, 50 SMA. This is a solid area right here of consolidation right here. If it comes back down to like 70, that would be a solid buy level, I would think. Um, that's my thoughts. So. Let's see, NIO, do I buy NIO tomorrow? Personally, I I won't be. I'm gonna buy it post-election, but NIO on red days seems to have been, as of late, a decent buy. Now, do you wanna be going all in on calls on NIO? Probably not, <laughs> but just in case you know the timing is off and things like that, but I think a decent buy on NIO is any day that it's red, is, is a decent time to average into a position, especially if it comes down closer to this trend line or this trend line or this support level here at like 22, 23 bucks. That's where I would love to see it, but I don't think it's gonna get there at any time soon, personally. It's got a lot of momentum right now. People did very well trading it um, on Thursday. NIO options were beautiful plays on Thursday. This breakout, it literally handled this breakout perfectly. Let's zoom in here on NIO. So it literally broke out of this downtrend. So we have the four hour chart so I can get a better view here. We have this downtrend, it hit this like five times, right? It breaks out above, awesome. But then it comes back down, it literally tests this top trend line. So it tests the prior area of resistance now. It forms that as support, pushes up, and then boom, the next day it rips. That was a good sign. When we saw that wick down, here, this is now um, on Wednesday. Um, Wednesday was a pretty red day in the market. When the, when the market was down that much and it held up, or at least it came back up on Wednesday and closed decently compared to where it was earlier in the day, that was a good sign going into Thursday. And with the market popping up Thursday, that was a beautiful play. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. AQB. Let's take a look. And those of you guys who are just jumping in, um, we'll, we'll talk more about stuff. Let's see, we got the Eagles game coming on, man. I'm, I'm just gonna have that in the back, in the background. You guys will be able to see it, but I'll, I'll be keeping an, an eye. It's my team. Um, first place, we have first place here on the line. It's big. <laughs> um, AQB. Now, I don't know too much about it. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Um, let's see. So it's trying to come down. It's breaking below the 50 SMA. Yeah, chart's kind of like a little iffy to me personally. I'm not a beautiful, perfect 
chart, but we have this kind of trend that we can kind of draw on right here. So there's that. So we have like three points pretty much. We have one, two, three areas. So let's see if it holds this trend. If it can't hold that, it may come down further. And that's what I'd be, I'd be looking for, for AQB. Um, LCA, yes. Um, Dapper, yes. <laughs> LCA is starting to make that, oh uh, wait, that's, where is LCA? Not this, not this, I want LCA. Um, it's starting to make a reversal. So we've been seeing it held up the support level right here that we were looking at from, you know, we're, we're just like, okay, where is it gonna find some support? You know, here it is. It found it from this area right here, 1150. It held up, held up, and then it's starting to make that reversal, especially on a red day in the market. Now it's looking decent in terms of the chart. So VVPR, Biden win, I think it's certainly certainly possible for sure. That could be a solid play. There's gonna be a lot of plays come, come Wednesday if we get a Biden win that, that could be making some moves. But my only concern with that though, I'm mean, going we'll to look at Jack here. It's actually starting to make some moves up. So it's putting in higher lows, which is good. Um, my only concern, though, with um, some of those Biden plays is, like, what happens if, and this is just me just speaking out loud. Maybe this doesn't happen, but what happens if we see a further sell-off? Like, what if everyone gets scared if, if he wins whatever the market sells off? Because it's, it's uncertainty, right? It's someone new. Maybe, you know, there's people are thinking tax purposes. People are thinking this, that, and everything. So, okay, what if we see a further sell-off? If he wins, do all these Biden plays, right? These, you know, green energy stocks. If the market's getting crushed, the market's down 3%, you know, day by, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if it's down a couple percent, do those plays hold up? You know, I don't know. It, maybe, maybe they don't. Maybe they actually are kind of affected in some way by the overall market being down so they're not as strong. So it's actually kind of a weird thing. Um, so you can kind of get kind of, it seems like you may be, there's, there's ways to get screwed here, honestly, either direction. So that's why I'm telling you, I'm just waiting, just wait for this, wait for the election to play out before you start going heavy on stuff. Um, workhorse, highly, I do like highly on, let's take a look at workhorse. Let's see. It's coming down. It's in this, it's in the buy range, right? That we talked about before. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's, let's be honest. I'm personally, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if it dips below. I would not. So I'm, it's, it's seeing, it seems very weak right now and just it's been selling off, selling off, selling off. So they may try to put out some news. We'll see what happens, but that's just what's happening on, at least for now. Um, let's see. YOLO NIO calls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I wish I bought some NIO calls on Thursday. Look at that. It would have been awesome. But um, I, I will probably not be YOLOing NIO calls. <laughs> Apple. Let's take a look at Apple, then we'll talk about, yeah. The workhorse, like I was talking, like I was saying, it's in that buy range, but it's looking weak. So let's let's. I want to see it consolidate around that 15. If we can't, it's not good. I want you know. Let's see what happens. Um, Apple, let's take a look. Apple fell out of this uptrend at least at least for now, right? Um, a lot of stocks honestly did. And this is actually very interesting. So it broke out. It broke or it cracked below the uptrend, and then it retested that trend line on Thursday. Market was up, right? And then Friday dipped down. So it. It kind of confirmed that this was a prior area of support and resistance, and now it's coming on down. So areas on Apple that I see looks like down in the low hundreds, so under 110, which is that right now. So like 105 could be a decent spot if we do see somehow below 100. That would be awesome. Apple below 100. Now whether or not the market dips in the next week or two, but if you can get Apple below 100, I think that's solid. Just stash that away in a longer term portfolio. Buy a bunch below 100, and then look at this in a year and say, "Yeah, it was an awesome buy." I, I think so. That's I, although, although I have been seeing some stuff, and, I, and people are skeptical as to, you know, what if we're due for like a, a, an overall market pullback? Like, what if we're due for like the overall market to just be in a downtrend for the next six months, a year? Is it is it possible? I I, I would argue no with the stimulus that we have most likely in the pipeline. Whether it happens now, whether it happens in six months, whether it happens in three months, I don't know. I think with stimulus in the pipeline, I don't necessarily want to go too, too bearish on the market just, just yet. Um, short term, I personally am, but again, you know, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and, and things can change very, very, very fast. The market is afraid of disputed election. Yes, yes. If there's a definitive win, the market might, yeah, that's certainly possible too because um, we don't like the market doesn't like uncertainty. So even if the market may not like, or people are skeptical as to the market not liking a Biden win, well, at least we have certainty. We, we know who won. <laughs> That's true. We know, we know we got a winner, right? Trump wins. People may like, yeah, Trump back again, right? Like markets going up, right? That may be what happens too. And so, okay, 
that certainty, if we have a winner, that could be good news for the market. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not expressing political views here, but I'm just saying, you know, how is the market going to react? I think the uncertainty, if we don't know, if it's so close, if we're watching Tuesday, right, and Tuesday nights and we're like, this is close, like, we don't know, they got more ballots to come in, it's going to be crazy Wednesday. Let me tell you, it's going to be a crazy Wednesday if we don't have a winner come Wednesday morning. That's going to be nuts. Which is why I'm just saying, just, just, if, you know, many times, right, this is a very volatile time. No trade may just be the best trade. Unless you're looking to grab stuff for the long term, some longer term investments and things like that. No trade here, guys, may just be the best trade. Actually, futures are pushing up, actually. Look at that. Futures are starting to make a move. Um, so they're coming back up from where they were. That's interesting. I wonder if there was any news. Um, but we'll see. That's just temporary. Things can, like, like we can change a lot, a lot um, in a very short period of time. So overnight, I would not be surprised. We wake up tomorrow morning and we have no idea. In, and futures look completely different from where they are right now. So that's just my thoughts. Um, those who are jumping in, ju those who are new right now, uh, if you guys would not mind smashing the like button, let's run that up. Um, I really appreciate you guys. Eagles already down 3-0. Not, so, not, not, not so happy about that. <laughs> I am an Eagles fan for those who are just tuning in. So I got my Eagles game on in the background, and we're doing some. We're watching some. Uh, we're watching the charts. We're looking at some stocks. So it's perfect. Um, Jack doing well. So we, we're good. I'm good here. I'm good to stay on for a while. So no, no rush. We're just chilling. Run off the likes because we hit 100 likes last week. We are nowhere near that. We got. I'm not. I'm not leaving until we get until we get 100 likes. Um, JWN ignored some. I think people. I've been hearing. And I've been and I've been looking, and people are liking Nordstrom a lot. Um, so let's take a look. Oh, what's GWM? Wait, where is this? GWN. Right? Yeah, Nordstrom. Okay. So let's take a look. Let's zoom out. Uh, it, it was a pretty, it took a pretty big hit <laughs> back in, like a lot of stocks did. But it took a massive hit and it's coming down. So it's, it's maybe trying to find some support here uh, around this. But um, personally, I would wait, again, like I keep saying, post-election. But this is a solid play. I'm going to look a little bit further into Nordstrom, potentially a longer-term investment, because there's a lot of room to the upside here for recovery. There's a lot of room to the upside. So that's what I'm going to be watching um, for sure. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Do you think it's risky to hold VXX through the election? So the great thing, the way that I'm going to go about it, right? So I have VXX calls, right? I'm hopefully looking to get out of VXX calls come tomorrow or Tuesday. And then the idea that I'm gonna have is that I have shares of VXX. So I'm going to hold those shares Tuesday and then I'm gonna make a decision come Tuesday night, right? Because since they're only shares, I can trade those after hours, right? So I can trade that until 8 p.m. Eastern. So I'm hoping at that point we have some clar some clarity in a sense, right? We get s maybe like we're seeing initial numbers coming in and it's it's looking like we're going to have a, a definitive winner or loser or this, that, and the other thing. And so that's where I'll be probably looking like, okay, let me sell out of my, you know, VXX or take half off or take, you know, three fourths of my position off in case we get some, cra I wake up tomorrow morning, right? And there's some crazy news that, hey, we don't know, we don't have a winner yet. Market may go nuts, volatile, you know, volatility, you know, crazy, right? But at least I have some that I, I, you know, can ride up a little bit more, but I wouldn't be holding calls personally. I wouldn't be holding too much of a position through the election, at least that you're not comfortable with or as something that you're not, if you're not comfortable losing it or if you're not comfortable, you know, with that, then don't do it. It's not a good idea. Um, that's just my plan. That's just my take. Um, yeah, NIO, I, I'll, I'll look at this again. I'll talk about it a little bit, but NIO, here's my, here's my lines. Here's my trend line. So the overall trend line, I like this one right here. I ideally would like to get it down, you know, on this trend line or around this support level. doesn't seem likely, but if we can't get that, then I'm liking it to come back to this temporary trend or this at least recent trend that we're having develop based off of these kind of higher lows being put in. So I like it there. I like it long-term. So for me, it's a it's a it's a play where it's like I'm gonna be buying NIO um, post election or on red days and just stashing it away, stashing it away for the next couple of years potentially. Um, that's my take on NIO. BLNK. It's funny. I know I know Kramer likes BLNK. Um, whether you like Kramer or not, he likes BLNK. Um, he was funny on his on a recent show he put in. He was talking about workhorse or he was talking about something right. 
and on um, he was like, I don't like Word Chorus, it's a show horse, but I do like BLNK um, in that similar sector, right? So I, I like, I do like it. Um, it fell out of this uptrend at least for now, but um, it's not, I think it's a solid play. Let's take a look, let me zoom in. Here's your kind of downtrend we got to break out of at least for now, 50 S maybe fell below. Doesn't seem to be respecting the 50 SMA, like some stocks respect it very, very well. So, you know, this 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 may be, a, a, this is probably another longer term term play in my opinion. Um, that's just my thoughts, at least for right now. APPS, apps, digital turbine. So it helped, it was holding this uptrend and then we fell through the uptrends. So now it looks like maybe we find some support in this area of consolidation back in like the 25-ish and even just below 25 bucks. Um, if we can't hold 20, then we may be falling down into this gap and drop into like 15 or so. So it's it was honestly back up here in the 40s, it was pretty overextended. So I'm not surprised at this pullback. But what what can we do? We can just come in here, we can draw some trend lines, draw this downtrend line right now. Um, and it looks like it's being held back or held below this downtrend. So we'll see what happens. We get a reversal to the upside. We fall further to the downside, we'll see. Um, but at least we can kind of put in some support potential areas. This consolidation could be support or we could fall down towards 16. Uh, at least that's my thoughts. Um, Sunrun, Sunrun. Let's take a look at Sunrun. Sunrun. Throw a, throw a ticker. I don't know. I don't even know. Um, it's oh, it's R U N. Yeah, guys, really quick. When you when you talk when you throw something out, I, I don't I'll always know the ticker. Like you, you throw out a name. I don't know the tickers. So just. Just throw the ticker out if you if you have it. It helps a lot. Um, so this is kind of your downtrend for now. It's it's kind of a similar. You kind of we see the same the same kind of pattern repeating. APPS, BLNK similar pattern. Sunrun similar pattern. So it's pulling back. That's what we got. So let it let it let it find some consult. Let it find an area and make a reversal or break out of this downtrend. That's what I would be looking at at least for Sunrun for right now. Well, that's my take on it. So we'll see. Um, I think the one, let's see, BLNK, yeah, if it's, I'm going to look further into like kind of like the fundamentals that drive BLNK post-election. There's a lot of plays like that that I have, I have my eyes on, especially in that kind of general sector, EV charging kind of that battery sector, right? That's a, a hot sector. I think it's going to be very hot for, for the next, you know, couple of years and more than a couple of years personally. Um, markets proven it can defy the pandemic. It, it certainly can. Um, and many investors have gotten a taste of the market. Yeah, so that's the thing. I think, honestly, um, like we've been seeing, the, buying the dips has been awesome. Um, the dip buys have been great in the overall market. It just, lately, that's what's been working. Uh, is it possible that we see a further longer-term sell-off? Sure. And I know people who are somewhat concerned about that because we haven't had that for a while, right? We've been, you know, everyone talks about, yeah, well, you can just invest in you know, S&P 500, right? Or invest in an index fund or you know, something like that, and you'll be good for you know, years. But okay, that's work. But at, at some point, are we going to have a, a more sustained longer-term pullback? You always got to think about that. I think about that at least. Um, at least it's somewhat of, a, somewhat of a concern, but short-term, I think people just, I think people aren't scared. I think people are going to be buying these dips. Market doesn't like uncertainty, right? Like we know, but I think short term, people will be buying up these dips, and I will be will be back on to the upside, back to all time highs very shortly. Especially if we get stimulus, we get stimulus, that'll be awesome. Because you're also going to have to throw in the the idea that we can have the stimulus checks. It's going to heat the market up again because, as much of a okay, like it's it's I think it's people are hurting, right? There's aspects of the economy that need stimulus, but as much as you kind of give stimulus checks, there's a threshold, right? There's a decent amount of people that, you know, we got like crazy, I don't know if you guys hear the sirens outside, but um, as much as there's like people that need it, there's also people who are gonna get it, who don't necessarily need it, but it's like a boost for the overall economy. So like if you're someone who makes like 50 grand a year, but you live, you know, you, you live modestly and you can survive and you're living comfortably off 50 grand a year, depending upon your situation where you live, right? And you get a stimulus check and you're like, well, I don't necessarily need this money. I haven't lost my job because there's people that are in that category. I haven't lost my job. I'm working remote. You know, let's throw it into you know, a Robin account or a Weeble account and let's let's see what we can do. Like people are going to, that's, that's what we got. And, and that was where we had a lot of fun and the market seemed to be very, you know, bouncy. It was crazy that this, this recovery that we saw over the past couple months was just insane. Um, I think now we maybe, you know, you may be even looking at people looking to get their, get their share those you know who were looking at this as like uh, this doesn't look too good. Um, 
the smart money, right? The, the smart money who was like, you know, who were like, yeah, this doesn't look too good. And I, I was personally one of those people who was like, I don't know with cases, the way that the economy is, yeah, we got stimulus, but like, I can see it going back down based on what's going on. And it just kept going up. <laughs> it just kept going up. So I don't know. You got people who are going to be ready with those, with stimulus checks in hand or in their accounts, funded their accounts. We get that stimulus. The market's going to be, I think, very hot. Um, especially like penny stocks and stuff like that, because people are going to be looking for ways to make more money. Like they're like, okay, like Apple's cool. We can buy some YOLO NIO calls or YOLO Tesla calls. Okay, whatever. But what if you want like potentially like 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 if you look at options trading, it's like super risky if you're looking to buy and buy calls, buy puts. But like okay, like let's look into like penny. People will get into like penny stocks. Like yeah, hey, let me try penny stocks. Like what is this stuff all about? Like you're gonna get a, a resurgence of, of flow into a lot of stuff. So uh, we'll see. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. I think uh, for sure. Let's see. Um, ETF and dividends for sure. Let's see my Apple call option. I don't. I wouldn't buy an Apple call option right now, personally. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll look at Apple again. I I like. If you're gonna do Apple call options and you have to ask, you probably um, personally are. You if you have to ask that question, I would say no. <laughs> But I would just say Apple long term or buy Apple for a long term swing. I mean, you should be fine. If you load up on the dips under 100 bucks or down low, in the low 100s, you're going to look back at that in the, in a couple months, I think, or even if not a couple months, okay, a year or two, worst case scenario, you're going to look back at that like and have a, an awesome ROI on that investment, I think. I mean, it's just a solid play. Unless some crazy unexpected stuff happens with Apple, I mean, it's probably going to be fine. Um, OSTK, let's see. OSTK. What did I just do? <laughs> OSTK. Overstock. This is absolutely nuts <laughs> because I remember I was like in overstock like like a year ago. Literally like a year ago or maybe even longer um, when it was down like under 10 bucks and I was like, oh my, like overstock's like at an amazing discount. Like let me play and I swung it and I made some money on it but I made like 20%. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm out. I'm gonna take my 20%. And look at it like, look at it like literally like six months later. It's hit 128. It's coming back though a decent amount now. It's coming back big time. So I don't know. Maybe it holds up around 50 bucks. That's what I'd be looking at. And um, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. 50 bucks is a is is probably a good whole number, a natural level of support. You know, you, when I say when you hear people say natural. 25s, 50s, 100s, whole numbers, $1, $2, $3. Like those are kind of your natural levels um, if you talk about support and resistance like that. PLTR, I like it potentially long term. I still haven't, I, I know, I, I said I was going to look into it. I still haven't looked into this one enough. But it's coming back down to this trend line. So we can zoom, let's zoom in a little bit better here to get a, see if we can see this a little bit better. It's still not much chart history, but it's coming down to this trend line. So like 10 bucks could be a decent buy. If it drops below 10, could be a decent buy. Um, if you are in it for the long term, I wouldn't be too worried, to be honest. Um, but let's see. So it popped to 11.34, and it's coming back down, potentially consolidating before a further move up or a further move down. Uh, we'll see. I, I, I do, from the things that I have heard, which I need to do more looking into it, but from the things that I've heard, I do, honestly, I do like it. Wall Street plummet 8.50. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised if we do plummet 8.50 on the Dow or something like that. Futures are now green. <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, futures are now just barely green. So I don't know if there's some news that came out, but I don't know. Oh, we're green. We're green for right now. Let's take a look at Boeing. Um, Boeing is getting killed. Well, this last week, right, we got killed. Everything got killed. So what are you going to do? Let's look at the daily on Boeing. Um, this is one of those that will probably benefit decently from stimulus for sure. So we'll see what happens with, with that. But let's say it's, it had this 145 support. Maybe it's not going to hold that anymore. I'd be looking for it to come down to 125 and potentially even 100 bucks. I don't know if it, if it will come down that far. But um, let's see. We'll, we'll, I, wouldn't be playing, I would not be playing airlines until you get stimulus or a bailout of some sort. So you got to get, get that, I think. You got to get that for me to play airlines. Um, cruise lines. We had, I believe, the ban was lifted. Um, right, I forget the exact news, but like there, there was a ban. The CDC lifted a ban or something. But the thing is, I mean, with the cases going up, who's? I don't think people are. I, I still don't think that they're going to be great plays <laughs> either way, um, with what we've been seeing at least lately. So, 
Um, I don't know. That's my thoughts. Eagles just scored a touchdown, so we're looking good. We're taking uh, a lead over Dallas <laughs> for those who uh, are, you know, football fans. Eagles Eagles are going to win the NFC East. That's, that's all I'm going to say. My team. QCOM, Qualcomm. Let's take a look at QCOM. Those of you guys who are just tuning in, we're at like about 100 viewers or so. Run up the likes. We got I'm not leaving the stream until we get 100 likes on the stream. We got to beat last week. We got to beat last week. And for those of you guys who do like the stream, like that's literally all I ask. Like I don't ask you to pay. I don't ask for donations. Of course, all you have to do, the donation is just a little like. <laughs> that's all I, That's all we want. Um, it, it helps us all because we get some more ideas in the comments. We get people in the comments talking about this, talking about that. Um, and maybe it sparks an idea. You write something down, and, and boom, you know, you have an idea for the week, and you can make some money off that. Hopefully, that's that's the goal. We're we're not, you know, that's what we're trying to do. So here's your uptrend right now for uh, QCOM, um, Qualcomm. So it's pretty. It's at this trend line. It's it's holding up right around this level. So it's at the line. The question is going to be: Do we fall back? Do we crack below if the, if the market looks weak? And it's possible. It's certainly possible. But we got to break. If we break out to the upside, break over this 132. Solid. It could be a solid breakout day trade or an options trade or something like that. I do kind of like it though. If we do fall below this level, what levels will we be looking at for support? Potentially 115, uh, potentially down here 110 or so. Um, further drops down 100 bucks. If we fall under 100, I don't know, 95. I don't want to say like, I'm just giving you guys some potential. I maybe you might be seeing. Um, so there you go, TDOC. Um, it's pulled back pretty significantly, nine, down like 10% on Friday. Uh, looks like 185 could be a decent spot down in here. Could be a decent spot for a buy, personally. I don't know too much about it. Um, so it, it, it's it's probably more of a either a longer term uh, investment or an options play for breakouts for intraday breakouts. If we break out above these highs or break out above one, you know, this is 235, 236, 250 could be a decent intraday breakout. KCAC, I actually haven't looked this one in a while, but we have the Bill Gates um, battery play. Let's, sorry, my uh, ringer was on. Um, let's see. KCAC, we got to zoom in. Chart's thrown off here for whatever reason. Meeple's got it kind of all weirded out, but let's look at the four hour to get a better view. Boom, boom, zooming out. It's like 11.25 right now. It's been honestly coming down. I, I personally, for a ba as a battery play with Bill Gates backing it, it's it probably I I have to look into it a little bit further. I do like it from the things that I've seen, so I would want to look a little bit further into it. But it's been like with all these spac plays, they it may come back down to ten bucks. So let's see what let's see what happens. Give it a couple more days. Let's get some more consolidation and a confirmed reversal. That's what I'd be looking for. Uh, on that. Boeing possibly jumping to one state. Well, I think we need we need stimulus. I think for Boeing personally, um, that's my thoughts. Spac plays short seems to be winning. Yeah, the shorts are winning on the spacs. Swing LCA, you could swing it. I would be more of a long term investor in it to be honest. But you could swing it. It's reversing out of this downtrend, so it's looking decent. It could be well if you're looking to swing it. It could be a decent 10, 20 percent swing in the next couple of days if it continues this reversal. And you know, the overall market may not affect it as much. That could be decent. Um, let's see. Apple call for yeah. So if you're in an Apple call for marks, that's fine. Like that's that's great. Like that's what you would be playing. Like Apple. Like so you don't really care about what happens to Apple tomorrow. You know, you're more so concerned about what's going to happen to Apple over the next six months. You know, that's how. If you're looking to play calls on instead of buy shares, then play calls longer term. Play them farther out. Now you could you could do great. Or you can get screwed if we have you know further pullbacks. But I think with stimulus, with things going on, I think it's going to be just fine. So um, if you can get a decent price call, I think it should be fine. MRIN. Let's take a look at MRIN. So MRIN is trying to come back. Let's take a look at the daily chart. It's trying to find some support. It was. It looks like this area right here, this two bucks, would be my best my best place for an entry but i don't i personally don't like it i would let it settle down a little bit more um i want to see a couple more days of consolidation maybe it, maybe it comes back above 250 and holds up over 250 or so so that's my thoughts oil coming back well if trump wins i think oil should be good i think oil may have a nice resurgence um post trump win if we get that if Biden wins, I think oil is going to be starting to fade out further. So I would be very careful, very skeptical and careful of oil if Biden wins, um, based off of renewables and stuff like that. Um, 
Awesome, Connor. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Let's take a look. What's your strike price, Michael A? Okay. A -S -T -A -C -S -T. Let's take a look at ACST. ACST. ACST getting crushed lately. Um, so this is a potential bottom bounce. So if you have any, if you have any um, uh, catalysts in mind here, I don't personally know, but if you have catalysts in mind, it seems like 18 cents held up. So we have to break over this 30 cents. So that gets us into the gap um, right here, into this gap, which could be awesome for a potential gap fill. So that's what you'd be looking for, at least for ACST. If there's, a, these are the types of plays for those of you guys who are like, who play like large caps and something like that. Um, I know some people don't like this stuff. Everyone's got their own kind of niche, right? But these are actually solid plays if you really know what's going on inside a company and you're ready for a catalyst. Now, a lot of these companies are really trash companies if you're playing penny stocks. But if you know how to play the penny stock trash, right, and you know, hey, this company is likely to put out a PR about this, or they have this catalyst, they have this presentation, or they have this report coming out, right? Well, you can get a run-up into that catalyst, or if you get a good PR, you can get a good break, a, a nice run up and a potential, you know, fill the gap type of move, which would be massive for an ACST. So I actually like it as a, as a bottom play um, where you're trying to get a, a low risk, high reward type of play. So I, I, don't, I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, ride. Let's take, oh, we got, I got to catch up a little bit. Bitcoin rising again. Yep. Bitcoin's pushing up. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Look at the, let's play the past you know couple minutes here. So Bitcoin, uh, let's look, look at the one hour chart to get a sense. So it's been hold. This is my trend line at least for Bitcoin. So it's actually looking pretty good. It's looking pretty strong. I like it. I like it. Almost bought Chopperware in July. Um, let's take a look. Tup. I actually was looking at this one too. I believe a while back. And look at that. Look at that. Tup ripping from twenty to thirty five ish. Thirty four. That's nuts. That's nuts. This is one that I was like, oh, wow, look at that. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. Back in July. And, and the thing is, back in July, you're talking about prices that are like under 10 bucks, And you're, you know, 30 plus. That's nuts. I, I remember I was looking at it, too. I was looking at this, too. I forget exactly why, but I was looking at it, too. Um, Google, sell, sell, sell. I mean, if the overall market's headed down, it, it certainly looks like it is very likely. Um Run up those likes, guys. We're at 55. We can get to 100. I know we can do it. Let's, I know if everyone hits a like button who hasn't clicked it already, I know we can get there. So ride. I, I like it. I like Lord Sun Motors. I do, but <laughs> it's been getting crushed. So I gladly, right? I liked it. I've been watching it. I never took an, a position. It was one of those, um, personally, it was one of those, uh, those stocks that I missed this run up. So it was like it went under the radar for whatever reason for me, right? I was looking, I was watching a bunch of SPACs, LCA, I was looking at Hylion, looking at um, Fisker, all these SPACs. This one went under the radar for me. Uh, and then I've recently been looking at it and it's coming down. So it's coming down to a decently favorable range, at least I think. So down around this 12 bucks seems to be a decent area that it, at least it held up after its initial push up to 15. It came back down, held up around 12 and then made its, its big run up. Um, they're, they have a nice facility ready to go. They're looking pretty good. So I would be watching, especially the news as to what's going on with them, but they look ready to go. So I like it. I do. I, I, I think it's a solid buying. You're getting into a decent buy range. Again, for me, after the election is a better spot, personally, for me to be buying that. So um, that's my thoughts on Ride. I think it has a lot of potential long-term though, for sure, um, as well as the whole EV sector. Um, VXX. And UVXY, I'm all on play. Yeah, that's a smart. That's a smart play. I think so because the thing is, this week, if you and for me, right, I'm in a couple swing trades that I've done the due diligence on. I like them; they're solid, so I'm going to be in them, and I'm just buying the dips. That's just kind of how. Okay, yeah, maybe it sucks because my account's going down as they tick down, right? But I'm playing them for the press release. I'm playing them for the ultimate catalyst, right? So I'm fine. That's you know, I can I can withstand those drops. Other than that, though, yeah, that's all I'm playing is, is volatility. VXX, I would maybe, I'm looking at just potentially playing SPY puts or playing like UVXY um, calls if SPY drops below. So if SPY drops below 320, that's my level. We fall below 320, whether it happens tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I don't care. That's not looking good. So I think we'll see a decent drawdown. So it would be like a day trade for me. So it would be like, I'll buy SPY puts or I'll buy like UVXY calls. Spy drops below uh, and, and holds below 320 for like a couple a couple candles and maybe the five minute chart. 
I'm in. I'll play it for the day, and then I'm going to get out. I'm not going to hold it overnight in case we get some news or something happens overnight to change things. So that's what I would be doing um, for SPY uh, or for like, you know, if, if I'm going to take something else other than my swings, right? That's how I'd be playing it. Um, yep, smart. Those are, that's, that's, and the thing is with the volatility that we're seeing, and that other thing too, though, is that if we do get, those could be great Monday, Tuesday, but if we get, you know, kind of, and we don't have a contested election or we don't have um, all the questions, there's not as many questions come like, you know, when we, like Wednesday morning. If we have a, if we have a winner, if we have a winner, um, there's less uncertainty. Like we kind of know, okay, we know who won. So that, that eliminates that piece of uncertainty. Now we still have uncertainty like, are we going to get stimulus? What does this mean for taxes, for this, for that, for the market, for this? Yes, there's still uncertainty, but ultimately, right, we now, one of the largest pieces of uncertainty is out of the question. So if we, that's that's the thing. But if we come to come Wednesday and we don't know who won, you, that could be an amazing day to play some UVXY, to play VXX calls, just to play intraday moves of the volatility indexes or to play spy puts. Even if the market doesn't come down, you still may see some volatility plays going up because we don't know who won. That could be cr- – as much as I don't want that to happen, some piece of me does kind of want to just see what the market would do. Like that would be nuts. And I mean I hope it doesn't happen because that would be a mess. But like at the same time, like kind of like w- what would happen? Like would we see SPY go down like insane or would we, would it hold up? Would volatility fly? I don't know. I mean I would expect volatility to fly, but you know, who knows? Um, so let's see, let's see, let's see. SQ Hexo, I like Hexo um, as a weed play, I believe. So it's popped down. Did it have an offer? Maybe, maybe it had an offering. But I do like it. I want to give it a couple of days. I, this is one of those that I'm, I'll be playing for. Like a, we got a Biden win and and weed names start running. I believe Hexo is a weed name. Um, so that could be a nice play for like an intraday scalp or for a quick overnight swing or something. Um, SQ Square. Let's take a look. So actually, let's we can probably draw a trend line in here. So we kind of got something forming right there. It's decent. It's trying to hold up here. If it can't hold that, then it probably will come down and, and maybe find some support in this prior area of consolidation, that 140-ish area. That's my thoughts. Um, Zoom, ZM. This is funny. Zoom traditionally has been that type of solid play for this pandemic because zoom right you would think it's kind of the pandemic proof play it's coming down so maybe it's just getting oversold with the overall market but with cases on the rise this could be a solid play i think honestly to buy some to do to grab some dips um i think it could be a good play i think it can and maybe it's it's a play where you buy some longer term calls and then you look for a move in the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months as we move into the winter i mean i don't know I don't know about you guys, but I mean, we're seeing all the lockdowns and all the stuff going on in Europe and everything like that. I know that we that Trump has said he's not going to do it, but if Biden comes in and takes over, you know, and he decides to lock things down, right? I don't know. Does Zoom make a, a bigger move? Could that be a Biden play as well? Certainly possible. I think it's a, it's a nice idea to have, and it's been it's been solid. It's been, it has it's been pulling back lately pretty big, but it's been a decent play, I think. So that's my thoughts. Um, PACB. Let's take a look. Pack Bio, Pacific Biosciences. Uh, it's 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 a lot. It's up a lot. I don't know. It's it's it seems like it's too. It's okay. It's coming back. It's not oversold on the RSI on term, terms of the daily chart. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's coming back down. I can see it come down further. I would want to see it consolidate a little bit a little bit better before we make a reversal back up. I don't personally like it. it's up too high for me based on how much it's moved over the past couple of weeks. There's not a, not a huge fan. That doesn't mean it's, it's going down. does not mean it's going down. Um, let's see. XTZ. XTZ. Um, oh, okay. So the this is actually a decent one. I actually kind of like it, especially and now of course it's an ETF, so I don't know if, necessarily know if, if, if the trend is making is, is making as much of a, a significant kind of piece of the puzzle here. But it could be solid. Maybe it comes back down under forty, and it's a decent buy off this trend line. But it's been recovering nicely over the past couple of, of uh, months, so I do kind of like it. Um, let's see. What should I buy tomorrow? Personally, I wouldn't be buying much tomorrow if that's just me. Um, but for those of you who like to play, you know, for longer term investments or longer term plays, 
Um, if you're looking to just grab some stuff on some dips, that's not bad. Look at GameStop. It came down. So it had that it had that news a couple of days, a couple weeks back, and it's been popping up, but it's come down and cracked this trend, so no longer in this trend. Uh, I would like to see it come down maybe to like 10 bucks or this $9 level, this, this area of consolidation, maybe down to towards 8 and dare I say, if it comes down further. Um, I think it's just in a free fall mode, so I wouldn't be touching it personally, if, unless you're going puts. Um, if the overall market's down, go puts maybe. But I'm, even that I think is a little bit risky, to, to be honest. I'm not touching it right now. Um, thinking of Baba calls and long-term holds and IPO. Okay, let's take a look at Baba. I haven't looked at Baba in a while. It looks, it's been solid. It's been holding up solid. Um, I, I do like it. I, honestly, this has been a solid performer over the past few months. So this on dips, great. So if, if you get further dips on uh, on Baba, boom, like by, by the, you know, if, if you are experienced with calls and know how to play it, boom, buy the calls. Give yourself some time just in case we have some more volatility, but you know, that's a sol- I think it's solid. That's what I'd be, I, I like playing the dips. I mean, as much as like everyone is scared in the red days, like those are the times that I like buying. Like <laughs> it's, it sounds like, you know, and it's, sometimes it's tough to do, but it's like a mental barrier that a lot of people have to get over. If you just, if you just think about it, if you buy the red, you know, and sell the green, like that's just a solid, it, it's easier said than done, but it's just a solid, a solid strategy that, I mean, honestly, for solid stocks that you're looking at, like NIO is one that I like for that type of strategy, right? Uh, even, you know, Bobble, right, for example, could be a, for a call. It's been, it's been strong. It's been very strong as of late, especially with the market coming down. So I like it. Um, yeah, don't buy anything tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So buy some volatility indexes or something like that, ETFs. Um, that's what I'd be saying. You know, um, Facebook, I'll take a look at Facebook. But other than that, though, if you like stuff long-term, buy the dips, you know, just continuously buy the dips. If you are looking for a swing trade, then don't, don't. I would not I would not be touching it. Personally, I would not be touching it. Um, so this Facebook's kind of got this little trend going. We can probably draw this back here. Yeah, it's decent. It's cracking it. So maybe it cracks this trend and comes down to this, like, 250 area. Um, we'll see. That's what we'll be watching and be looking for, for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, I think it's a lot of things that are better bringing the markets down. Uh, it's not just the virus. I, I, I don't think it's actually as big a deal, honestly, um, personally. Um, the virus is kind of, I don't want to say priced in, but it kind of is. Um, just uncertainty of the election, stimulus, things like that. I mean, that's what I think is, is potentially um, driving. There's a lot of stuff just driving it, really. And the virus not helping. FedEx is coming down a little bit off of where it was. It's been on an absolute tear. Um, again, FedEx, UPS into this quarter four is not a terrible play, but 250 maybe is, is your better buy, closer to this 50 SMA. Maybe it holds up. It seems like it has bounced off that level like at least a little bit in the past. So that could be a better buy, 250-ish, uh, although it's pretty overextended, to be honest, to me. So it's, it's kind of in, in downfall mode. So we'll see. Be me, B I M I. That that one is a is a is a, honestly was one I played a while. I was in and out and and look at what happened. It spiked up pretty crazy. It's coming back down. This is one of those penny stock spike plays. If you like to play it for the press releases and stuff like that, um, person let it come down. Penny stocks in general, though, I am not. They have. I think we're gonna enter a period though where they heat up again, but they have not been hot. They've been very kind of gross. Like it's just been not been fun. No volume. They haven't been getting as much volume. Large caps have taken over earnings and stuff like that. So I don't know. Personally, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a big player. I, I, I'm in penny stocks that I like, but they have just, I'm hoping that my stocks don't issue a press release Monday or Tuesday because it's not going to do well. If you're in for a press release or something like that for like a penny stock, it's great when the market's hot, when the penny market's hot, when small caps are hot, but when it's not hot, it's not fun. So Intel actually coming down to this area right here, um, the support level. So it's actually not bad. This 40, low 40s is a decent buy on Intel. It seems like it's what it's, it's been, and especially off of this massive sell off, we're in oversold conditions yet again. And every time we've hit oversold conditions, it's bounced pretty solidly. So it's actually a solid buy. It could even be a, a solid call play as well. I, I do kind of like that. I like AMD over Intel. Okay. Based on the chart, Intel looked decent, but AMD, oh man, I, I, remember, I remember watching AMD when it was like under. 20 bucks. Oh, I haven't, I actually haven't been paying attention to it in a while, but look at this. This has actually been some awesome breakouts to the upside. So we had this little breakout, which is cool to see. 
over that 58-ish area. Boom. And now it's looking like it's trying to hold up around that 75, low mid-70 mid area. We can do that in a further breakout. And do we see 100 bucks? Maybe. Maybe. PayPal, we looked at that one a little bit earlier. I'll talk about that here in a sec. Um, what is PayPal? PYPL. That's PayPal. It's actually, it's holding up. If it can hold up along this uptrend higher lows and make a breakout to the upside, that's what I'd be looking at. That's what I'd be liking to see um, for PayPal. Uh, personally, I wouldn't, wouldn't buy it now, but I don't know. That's my thoughts on PayPal, at least for right now. AM. AMD is going to overtake the similar. I'm, I, I'm not as um, well versed in that stuff, but I, I believe you. I, I based on the, the, the performance of the Intel chart versus the AMD chart, I think it's pretty clear to see who's the, who's been stronger as of late. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, one thing to also to also note is that it seems as if, and I look I look at, go back to Spy. And it's something that you probably have heard too. The market likes to take its stair step up and it takes the elevator down. I mean, if you just look at some of these drops, it comes down generally, right? You'll see it, it drop 5%, 10% so much faster in a shorter period of time than it will gain 5%, 10%, right? That's what we have generally seen. So for me, uh, the next elevator um, is if we can go, if we get to the, the 320 level, the, the 320th floor here, if we come down to the 320th floor on SPY, <laughs> Uh, the elevator might might be taking us down towards 300. <laughs> it might. The next stop could be down pretty low. Um, maybe it finds some support in here, 310, I think, but then 300 is potentially our next level if we see a further drop. But what could save us would be the, uns well, we see some uncertainty, right, Monday, Tuesday, but what could save us is the certainty of knowing who won the election, knowing that we have a winner, right? And maybe we see a further sell-off after that, slower term, you know, shorter term, who knows? But that could save us if we are falling to the downside. That could be the, the saving grace in a sense. Um, airlines are cheap, yes, but I'm not a fan still. I'm just not. I do like Open Door. I'm going to give it a little more time, but I like it. I do like Open Door. Been selling off a lot lately, but I do like it. Uh, airline. Uh, my thing with airlines, though, is just we. I mean, we, we, okay. I know Trump doesn't want to shut down. Right? I know we have that going for us. So if he wins, okay, there's that. But at the same time, I'm just not playing that until we have. Low, I mean, we were, we were seeing better signs the you know some points in the summer in terms of case counts going down, but they're going back up. Okay, we're testing more, I understand. But at the same time, it's just like with all these shutdowns across other countries, I think especially with the Biden win, I, I would be very, very skeptical um, going with an airline player with something like that because we're just not, we're not back. We're not back to that level of, of people feeling even if they're, you can take you can take flights. People are just not ready, I don't think, to do it as much. And to, for those who've been doing it, I'm nothing against you, but personally, right? I don't I don't mind <laughs> I don't mind um, myself doing it. I don't mind myself flying, right? But it's like when you in date when you when you have to like when someone else is at danger, like I say, you're going to visit a, a grandparent or something like that. Like that's my thing. So personally, I'm I'm not a big fan until we get some more clarity on on uh, virus numbers and some potential potentially we see you know a vaccine dare i say i think we're still got lots of time until we get something like that but um that's my thoughts uh i do like open door like i said um yes exactly exactly so nio gave me 20 this month let's see w okay let's see wbtc what's that wbtc I don't know if it's even a ticker. Unless you, uh, I don't know. Not not showing up, so I'm not sure what what that one is. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're looking to if you're looking to grab airline stocks long term, stash them away. Stash them away long term. Buy the dips. Start buying the dips. Start accumulating some of that. I think into this winter that could be an amazing time to start accumulating airline stocks, and I think that's going to be awesome for those who are ready. Come the time, which. Maybe maybe is next spring. Maybe is next summer. Maybe it's even the year after that. But come the time, airlines will do well. I think they will do very well uh, at some point. Um, so um, I can't wait to get up in the morning. At watch six thirty West Coast. Yep, it's gonna be fun. I'm telling you, I I, uh, uh, I am very excited for what's gonna happen this week. I mean, I don't. Do I know? I have no idea what's gonna happen this week. But let's take a look. 
futures are back to like even-ish. They're, it, it, they, they were down a decent amount, and they've recovered, kind of recovered a little bit. So um, there's that. What's the next NEO? I wish I could tell you. Uh, no, okay, FSR. <laughs> For those who know what I'm talking about, uh, one day in the near future, well, okay, in the next couple of years, I like, I like it, but it's just a matter of time here, I think. Personally, they got a lot of time. They got a lot of things to prove over the next couple of months. But here's Fisker. Um, if you guys want to look further into it who, do, who don't know about it, I have videos on my channel going over it if you want to check those out. But I like it. I do. I'm buying it long term. Under 10 bucks is a gift for those who got it under 10. Um, no, I think – and I'm not really concerned with the Volkswagen rumors either on Fisker. It's, I don't think it's all hype. I mean if you look further into it, they got a billion bucks cash on their balance sheet right now post-merger. So, I mean they have the funding to get through production. And they're anticipating being cash flow positive um, just after the next. So their first vehicle is starting production in 2022. It's an electric vehicle, the Fisker Ocean. And then they're anticipating being cash flow positive the next year as they ramp up production. Uh, and they're partners with Magna. So they're having Magna do all the production of their vehicles. And so it's kind of like um, that's kind of how they're doing it. That They compare themselves to like kind of an Apple in the same space where like, Apple kind of outsources the production of their devices, um, but that's that's kind of how they kind of see it. So I don't know. I like it. I personally like it. I'm just buying the dips. That's my thing. Um, yes, Wednesday is going to be nuts if we get no winner. That's I don't know. I don't even. Want. Wednesday is going to be like one of those days where it's like either you you absolutely get destroyed on Wednesday if we don't have a winner yet, or you do insanely well. Or you just stick out of it and, and say, I'm not going to play. I'm just going to watch. But I know people are like, it's so much easier said than done in terms of like, oh, I'm just going to watch. People are like, I'm going to – they want to be in. They want to be in. Whether they're going to be in for the win or the lose, they're, they want to play. They want to play the game. <laughs> That's just it. Um, NNDM. I know I know people who like NNDM personally for me. Um, I want to see it. It's coming down a little bit. So I, I want to see it maybe come down a little bit, little bit more under three. Before I be starting to look at it, I know I know people are seeing this one not necessarily as a swing trade, more of a longer term investment. Um, that's what people are looking at it as. Uh, I don't know too much. I have to look into it further. I know I think Ark Invest is looking into this one. They're buying some. So um, Solo is the next Neo. Let's actually take a look at Solo. Um, I missed out on Solo actually recently because it came down. It was doing that same thing where it had that spike and then it was coming down, you know, consolidating and held up around here and then it spiked back up, but it came back down and did it again. So it's like ah. Uh, I want to see Solo come back down to 250. It could be a solid spot to buy some Solo if it comes down to that low, that low again. Selling cash secured puts to build out a dividend. Yeah, I like that. Um, that's I like honestly. If you're if you're looking into options, and the, the thing that's, that sucks though, to be honest, is that most people when they try to trade options, they're like, I want to make the most money right now. So if you're gonna be selling puts. And in okay, so if, if you're gonna sell a put, let's say you want to buy some like realty income, like for example, here's a dividend play. Realty income pays you a dividend every single month. It's a solid dividend. I forget the actual percent um, on the dividend, but it's solid. They pay you every single month, right? Um, it's somewhat recovering, but coming down a little bit as of right now. It's in commercial real estate, so is that the hottest sector right now? No, but it is what it is. I like it for a longer term play, but. If you wanted to say, okay, you know, I like realty income. I'm going to be comfortable buying realty income, let's say at 50 bucks. So you can sell puts out to like 50 bucks. And if it ever comes down below by your strike, if it ever comes down and you actually are, you know, given those shares and, you know, you've already said, you know, I'm fine with it at 50 bucks. I like it. I like it at that point. That's a solid dip buy for me, right? It's paying a solid dividend. That's a solid place. And if it doesn't get there, you make money on the premium. And if it does get there, you still made money on the premium, and now you bought the stock that you're looking at that you wanted to buy in the first place at a, a fair price that you pretty much have set. So I like that. And also selling covered calls. People don't like that because, okay, it, could cap your, it can cap your gains. Yes and no. I, I understand what you're saying, but there's a fine line of like selling covered calls on like shorter-term swings or stuff like that. So I don't know. I think selling calls and puts is where most people should start options trading to get a feel for it before they start buying calls and puts. But people won't do that because there's a lower barrier to entry, I guess, in a sense. Um, if you're a five cent option or a 10 cent option, pay 10 bucks and you, your, your skin's in the game. You know, you have skin in the game, you can double your money. 
Uh, and people want that more, right? People don't want to wait. They don't want to buy. Like they don't want to say, hey, I don't want to sell cover costs. I don't, I don't want to own 100 shares. I don't want to buy, you know, or sell cash secured puts. No, people don't want to do that. But it's how you sh that's how I would recommend you at least learn options or do it. That's my play. That's my thoughts. Um, let's see. Um, let's take a look here. Oh, we got we got workhorse. Workhorse group. So here's my workhorse chart. We're in this buy range like I've kind of talked about before. Uh, personally, based on the selling pressure we've been seeing, I don't know, I can see it dropping further. Uh, although there's a decent amount of shorts in workhorse. So what is that? That's actually a, potentially a good sign. If they ever get that USPS contract, um, good or bad, right? Well, good, obviously, if you want to move up. But if they ever get that contract, workhorse is probably a solid... Um, play for a massive short squeeze. If you want to just get in on the action, play calls, play intraday calls, if they ever have good news, this would be a great play because all those shorts are going to have to cover. That's the thought. They're going to have to cover. So that's my thought. It's in a, I'm going to give it some time though because I want to see it consolidate and show some signs of support. Hit this level once or twice, show some signs, make a reversal. Then I'll be buying workhorse. As of right now, it, it could just plummet right through this 15 so or 14, you know. So that's what I'm thinking for workhorse. I know everyone's like, it's a very popular stock. Here's FSLY, and I had I was scared about it last week, but we talked about it, but it, it had this $75 support, but it just fell through. And I was like, it seems strong, I know, but the selling pressure of the overall market just kind of brought it down. So that was the deal with Fastly right there. Um, now let's, let's give it some time. Let's see if it, if it finds another area of consolidation and looks to make a potential reversal in the near term, but that's the thought. Um, with FSLY, at least for right now. Um, yep, manager positions. We'll see. Be very careful. ADMP, I'm still in. Um, there's actually been some, I've been seeing some stuff with ADMP. Um, here it is. So it's trying to hold up at this like upper 60s level, um, which we had some support in the past. But ADMP, I saw some some potential leaked, um, a potential leaked approval of their product that we're looking for that FDA approval. So that's the kind of the good the good stuff that we have going with with that. That's what I'm looking for um, in terms of at least watching ADMP. I'm still buying some this week. I bought some more this past week, um, but we'll see. Um, let me just take a pick here. Let's see. One sec. Okay. So yeah, seem like upper 60s is holding up for now. Looks like it may be looking to reverse. That's my thoughts. Um, what else? What else we got? TRVN looks good. Morphine comp um, competitor approved drug. Good buyout candidate. Okay, let's take a look at TRVN's chart. It's looking decent. It's recovering off the 50 SMA bounce, so that's a solid, a solid bounce point. So I like that. I do kind of like that chart. It's been nice and uptrending ever since this massive kind of craziness and then downtrend and then up and then down, but it's it's on an overall uptrend, which is solid. Think, thinking um, banks are gonna take a hit through this election. Uh, yeah, I think so, but I also think that they'll recover very nicely post-election, especially with stimulus. I think so. Um, I, yeah, I'll look at Apple again. So here's my thoughts on Apple. It's a, I mean, I'm just longer term bias. So Apple's coming down, broke out of this kind of, these higher lows. It broke out of this uh, uptrend line that we had. But it could be a good buy. If it comes down under 100, it's a good buy. Personally, um, I think that's where I'll be looking at for Apple and just grabbing it for the long term, grabbing some for the long term. Uh, those people, everyone who's like super crazy, if, unless you're gonna, you know how to play options, if you're super concerned with Apple, like I think it's just, it's it's when you start messing with options and you don't really know what you're doing with options and you say, oh yeah, I kind of know, yeah, just buy calls, it goes up. If you don't understand the time aspect, you don't understand the calculations, and you don't understand like where Apple kind of needs to go in the near term for you to make money on this on this contract, because you can lose all your money even if Apple goes up, right? If you buy the wrong contract, um, I would be very careful of that personally. That's what I would be doing um, for Apple, and then I don't know. I, I think it's a long-term buy. I think it's just a long-term play. It's just it's just as simple as that. Buy some, and you know in a couple of years it's going to be worth more, almost guaranteed. It's like. It's like people people start overthinking that at some point. It's like, you know, you be cute. You don't have to be cute a lot of the time. So I don't know. That's that. TTCF. 
Um, I like it. Let it come down and consolidate a little bit more. Um, puts. <laughs> I don't know if I, if I about the puts. If I had a put that I was going to play, it would be spy puts under 320. So the reason why this prior area of support right here, we hit 320. We drop below 320. I think we're going down 3, 315, 310, 300. Those are my levels, at least I'm, I'm thinking about. So if you really want to play puts, but I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it because if you're going to swing trade puts, terrible idea in the volatility that we're seeing. If you're going to day trade them, that's what I would say. That's go for the day trade. I'm, that's my plan is buy either you know volatility calls or spy puts or um, UVXY calls or VXX calls, um, which is essentially going to go up when the market comes down um, if spy goes below 320. That's my thoughts. I don't know, but the workhorse deal, I, I, I think it's up in the air. And based on what we've been seeing, to be honest, I, give it some time, but they may get a piece or a chunk of that deal. They may not get the whole deal, but that'll be fine. But um, my bets is, is that they're not going to get the, they're not going to get an exclusive deal personally. That's my bet. And I'm not betting on the stock to go down, but um, that's that. Yeah, I'm using Webull. This is the Webull desktop platform that I have. It's, it's, I have a link down below to get three free stocks if you guys are really interested. Um, still going on through um, November 16th, I believe, is when they're, they're running that promotion, at least for now. They may push it back. They may push it further, but they're running that promotion to get three free stocks. The link is always in the description box, like always. <laughs> S-O-N-N. Let's see. This is a, a nice bottom play, potentially. Yeah, look at that. A solid bottom play it looks like a 320 or 330 or 325 support or i mean a 225 support so it's coming it's it's not a terrible bottom play if you have any dd on it like if you know hey they got a pr coming soon or hey they got this coming it's a solid i think it's a solid play solid uh, I, personally that's what i think um let's see um, nhi a good buy now well like i'll i'll say to those who are coming on who are new um, I don't think anything's a good buy personally before the election, unless you're playing long. If you're, you're going to buy long-term plays, um, let's see. This is it's a very similar chart to some other stocks you've been seeing, kind of like your traditional, like non-tech recovery chart. <laughs> like honestly, you had the massive sell-off back in March, right? Then you have a recovery, a decent recovery with the overall market, but not back to where it was. So it's like you know, you kind of have the tech giants like the Apples and the big-time Amazons that had like that kind of skewed the overall like. It, the overall recovery it looked better than kind of what we ideally saw for most stocks now it's come back down so it's kind of your traditional play it, we get a further recovery this could be one of those plays that we see a, a further back towards where it kind of was but i think we may need to take some time so it's fell below this 55 maybe 50 bucks is your next support area that i'll be watching and if it falls below that look to some of these these you know these candles to the downside if we don't have these candles to the downside um if you're not like if, if, if you're looking for areas of support prior areas that we held up as support in the past could be some areas that you'd be looking at for some support um, in the future so i think um tr and e this is a this is a decent spac play this is it's come this is a solid play i mean it's back down to these low levels if you like it i personally um am not in but if you like it right now i mean here you go you're, you're at a solid level if you think it's a it's if it's undervalued which i think it from when i was looking at it i i liked it back up in here, I believe, honestly. I haven't looked at it too much right now. I'm just going to give some time on some of these plays, but I, I do like it at these levels, especially if it gets under 10. That's what I think is could be good. CHFS. It's been heating up a little bit, seems like, lately. So let's see. What do we got with CHFS down in here? We had that reverse split. All right, well, we're making new lows, so I personally don't want to see that. I mean, when you keep making these new lows, I want to see it hold up. And it tried to hold the $6 level, and it didn't. So there's that. Um, yeah, okay. AQST. Let's take a look at AQST. Mm -mm -mm. So 438 was a low here, 4 bucks. Could be a 4 bucks as your support. Could be a decent spot. Um, try, trying to make higher lows after this drop off here. And this is the gap. Over 550 is a nice gap. You have a nice dollar plus gap, so that's a decent spot you want to see this thing get over 550. But if you start dropping below 450, four bucks, the thing you start falling to the downside pretty nice. I mean, pretty decently. Uh, so I wouldn't wouldn't personally be liking that. Um, that's it's kind of in a weird spot right now though. So better buy would be closer to 450 or even four bucks um, for a potential reversal back to the upside. I don't know much about it though to be honest. 
um, therapeutics. So it's, I guess you're in that in that same in that decent sector. Although these plays haven't been as hot as they as they have been in the past. So there's that. Um, CCL long term. This is actually I think it made a nice move up on Friday or Thursday. Yeah, because there was some news about how they're no longer restricting some of the cruise lines. Um, although I still don't think people are going to be taking cruises any, anytime soon. So I give it, these are going to take some time, but these will be some solid recovery stocks. Keep them on a list. If you are really confident in them, just slowly start accumulating the airlines, the cruise lines, and you will do very, very well come time of vaccine and come time of eventually getting out of this. Although I think we're going into a period right now, the winter, where things are going to get worse before they get better. That's just what's going to happen. And does the market kind of see past the virus? Maybe. Um, but, the, you know, I don't know. Is it a risk? Or is it worth holding some of these? I think you could probably put your money into them um, once we kind of have a uh, vaccine or once we get closer to like the spring and we see case counts going down. That's when you may, it may be a, a better time. Your money may be better used elsewhere, I'm saying, in the meantime. Unless you have some cash just to throw there for a long-term play. And that's that. Um, AQST has a proof in March. Okay. So they should start to run in late January. So there you go. So there's AQST. Get ready. Come revisit that one in January. There you go. NIO, I can talk about it quickly because I know people are you know coming in and out. So I'll talk about it again quick. Here's my thoughts on NIO. Either it comes down to this trend line first. So like as of right now, it, you know, it depends on how far it consolidates, how it consolidates. It comes down to this trend line that I have right here, or it comes down to this broader trend line that we've been seeing over the past couple of months. Um, those are some really good buy areas in my opinion. Either, the, either way, I don't know if it's going to necessarily come back to the trend line. Uh, I like it as a long-term play and it's got the momentum right now. So it's kind of ride the hot hand. Um, personally, I would start to I'm going to start to accumulate some shares post election, and if I'm going to play it short term, it would be like option breakout plays because it's been a great breakout trade. Um, but long term, I want to start to accumulate some. I think under 50 bucks, to be honest, is a, is still solid on NIO in a couple of years. I don't think it will be trading at that level. I think it'd be much higher. Personally, that's just my thoughts. Um, personally, yeah, I think NIO can certainly come back. It can pull back. But it, it may not. So, I mean, it's been very strong, especially in this market. So, um, let's see. They want to lock us down in the dark of winter. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I think I'm, I mean, and I think people can kind of see that coming too. Um, the scare is that, oh, if, if Biden wins, right, we're probably going to have some more um, stricter lockdowns like we're seeing in, in Europe and stuff. And you know Trump doesn't want to do that. And that's just his take and that's how he's going to do it. But if Biden wins, um, yeah, we will probably be, we'll probably be locking down. I would say at some point in the winter, um, for sure, there'll be more at least more restrictions on that stuff. Um, what can be open, what can't be open, and and, and it's, I don't see cases going down anytime soon, especially this winter coming up. I think we're going to see cases on the rise through March potentially. You know, we may be seeing, or at least it may rise and then hold up at a pretty high level through March until we kind of turn to spring. I think that's what the case is going to be. But you know. Again, depends upon vaccines, depends upon, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, Regeneron, like, who knows? <laughs> stuff like that. So we'll see. Um, let's take a look. What else we got? GE. GE has been on a nice little uptrend kind of lately. It was a better buy back in here under 7 bucks, though, to be honest. Um, so there's that. I think it's a solid recovery play for a bigger move up, a broader move up on the overall when things recover a little better. But that's the thing. That's the thing. There will be dips. The question will be if the market goes into a negative trend. I think that's what I'm thinking too. Um, with the stimulus, I think we're going to be seeing, you know, we're going to have like pushes up um, and the pull might be to the upside. But I think, honestly, I, I think that's a question that I have too, is do we eventually go on a, a longer term downtrend? Now, maybe it's not like a, you're not going to notice it as much in certain stocks, but do we, you know, overall market, do we head downwards? Is that is that, you know, out of the question? I mean, it's, you, I don't know. At some point, I think it's it's worth thinking about. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, let's take a look. Uh, let's look at SPY again. For those who are just jumping in, let's take a look at SPY. So 320 is our level on SPY. Um, we got to drop below. We dropped below 320 on, on SPY, and I'm, 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 I'm seeing a pull to the downside. What I'm probably going to do is futures are actually turning green. I'm probably going to wrap things up here, guys, in just a little bit because it's been going for a while. Um, it's been like two hours, actually. So I'm going to wrap things up, but what I'm going to probably do, solely last lost the momentum. Yeah, the approval. Um, let's see. I don't know. 
Soli was one that I was in. I got shaken out. I was a weak hand, unfortunately, but uh, that's that. So overall, guys, last second thoughts here. Futures are slightly green right now. They were actually a, a decent amount red. I'm going to kind of chill out here. Uh, i got to take a shower. I'm going to watch my Eagles point on the Cowboys as they're driving. So it's my team. I'm going to watch some of that. We're going to, you know, hopefully have a cra- – we're going to have a crazy week, I think, no matter what. It's going to be nuts. Um, we'll see what happens, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, I'll probably live stream again this week, potentially Tuesday afternoon, so stick around for t- – stay tuned for Tuesday. That could be a decent time for a live stream. Um, other than that, though, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to smash thumbs up on the way out. Um, we didn't hit last week's highs, but but we'll try it again next time. We'll try it again next time. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Have a good week. Good luck this week. I'll be back for more videos, more live streams. So, so stick, stick around. Stay tuned for that stuff. But appreciate you guys, and good luck this week.